When you walk through the garden. And I, I know I've gotten, we were just discussing it before the show, Better Find a Church has been in my head since fucking I just, Wednesday. I just love that your first word of the week was and. You started the show with I know, and. <laughs> we were just talking about it off the air, but that, that has been in everybody's head. I know it's been stuck in my head. Behind a church. I figured it was something by like Jimmy Buffett or the Beach Boys because it already feels like a tropical paradise in this studio. It is warm. Yeah, it's yeah. not that hot though. <laughs> we got the heat way up. Is it way up? <laughs> oh, way up. Oh, I'm sorry. Turn it down a little. <laughs> I always give it a little tweak when I walk in, but I don't want it to be too too hot for everybody's enjoyment. Oh yeah, that's why. That's why Rob ends it, up Rob. going shirtless half the time well, when he's filming guests. Yeah. yeah, that's why I do it. You like to sweat Rob out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old pepperoni <laughs> nips. Like we're in a fucking Indian sweat lodge. <laughs> oh well, welcome, welcome everybody, and happy Monday. Oh, bad elevator improv, you're winery. I was on my elevator this morning. I stink at improv on the elevator. <laughs> By the way, I'm insulted that I said, "Oh well, uh, welcome everybody." Uh, happy Monday, and you're like, "Oh, bad improv." That reminds me. No, no, it rem- <laughs> <laughs> here's why. This happened as I was leaving this morning. I got on. The, I'm on the elevator, and it stops, and a guy gets on, and I just yawned, and he goes, ah, "Mondays," and, and and I, but I instead of just shutting up and leaving him in that, what did I say? Uh, yeah, I just can't. It never gets easier. What? As, I, I am so fucking awful. Why do you want to be a normal person so badly? I don't know what to say. The guy said something. I'll tell you, it's an improvement from your last bad improv. What was that? Downstairs with the uh, with your bag. Bag of cash uh, guy. Uh, Who, by the way, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Better. Every single time that I've come in, you know how I come in, you know, after the red eyes, after the WWE gigs, just come right here from the airport? Yeah. Every single time that I'm leaving here with my luggage, same guy says the same thing every time. Ah, bag full of cash? And I just go like this. Ha ha ha. And just keep walking. You should say no. No, no, there's no money in here. I don't have any. Whoa. Don't, no, I don't have any. There's no money in here. This is clothes. Clothes uh, and, um, and toiletries and things of that nature. Yeah, I have my That's toiletries. That's what your answer should be next to me. No, 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 no. There's, no. there's only clothes and toiletries and things of that nature. Right. <laughs> Give them a really shit right. answer. And a snack I didn't finish on the plane. Yeah, you should actually stop and go, no, no, there's no money. Like, you're concerned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what was your response to that guy? It was so bad. Because, again, on the elevator, I'm, I'm utter garbage on the elevator. He said Monday. And what I said, uh, uh, yeah, I hate, no, I, I never get used to it. Or you never get used to it. I, I tripped on it, and I was he, clumsy. It was just a terrible response. I mean, by the way, there's no, I, I feel better on Mondays than I do on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursday. I mean, they. No, I don't. Mondays are the worst. No way. Because my sleeping schedule's off. Do you actually get back on a sleeping schedule? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I went to bed early last night. I feel like as the week goes on, I just get more tired. So by the end of the week, I'm a fucking zombie. Yeah, the whole thing's just a disastrous cycle. I'm, I was just, I just don't like getting up on Monday. Well, I know. I heard about this elevator conversation. I mean, look, there was no. You lies never get told. used to it, do you? you? Know, but no, I, I would have been fine if I said that. If I said, yeah, you never get used to it, mm-hmm. but I said, like, yeah, I hate, and you, and you never get used to it, <laughs> I just tripped out like a fucking asshole. Like, you stumble through. Oh, I suck. I stumbled through polite banter. Polite fucking elevator banter I stumbled through. Do you understand that the people who do that, like, the people who make it a regular feature of their lives, that there's polite elevator banter, they sit there and they look at what you do on stage, and they go, I could never. Oh, the guy, I mean, what you do on stage is the number one fear that people have. Public speaking. Bombing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they watch you and they go, see, that's why I'm afraid of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's justifying my fear. He's up there floundering. Exactly. But they go, I could never do that. And you sit there and you watch them have normal people conversations and you go, I could never do that. I don't understand how this is happening. This this back and forth thing that you guys are doing, I don't. I don't understand. My ex girlfriend would always point that out to me too, like how fucking shit I was at improv mm-hmm. on the elevator. I'm just, it's not to be. I just I can't do it. My, my my mind shuts down with polite banter. Well, why don't you just not do it? You're probably right. But why do you make say, an effort? Because when a guy says something right. to you, it's hard not to respond politely. You know, you're not just trying say, to. Yeah, I know. That's what I. That would have been great, but I would have tripped on that. <laughs> we all know. Yeah, but no. Yes, good. I, I would have tripped. <laughs> Yo, I wasn't trying to be funny. I was you're just trying, trying to, to be, yes and these guys. Yeah. There's a little bit of yes and And by the way, when I said it, he was looking down at his phone fucking texting already. Because he wasn't actually... He didn't pretend to be interested in what I had to Mm -mm. say. Mm -mm. 
Because he says, here's the thing it's about polite banter. It's yeah. it. Here's the thing about these banter things. He's not worried about what your response is. He doesn't care. No. He's You'll, not actually sitting there making, he probably doesn't even feel that way. Oh, Mondays, am I right? He doesn't, it, there's, no. he was responding to my yawn. Do you know what would have been great? Is as the elevator doors open to get off at the lobby, if he had a, a fucking massive heart attack and crumpled on the floor, and I walked off and just left him there, <laughs> and then saw the doors close and came to work happily. Yeah, news that, footage would be released, and then the comedian Jim Norton like, "Why didn't you say anything?" I'd be like, "I didn't feel like it." Right, <laughs> not my obligation. I didn't kill him. Improv is not my strong suit. Not my strong suit. So I decided to just he leave. He wanted it alone. to shame me by fucking looking at his phone after my polite re response. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you should go. I, you should make it a point to be conscious of those moments and going forward. Oh, yeah, Mondays. Am I right? You go. <laughs> yeah. Chuckle. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that that's the way to get out of everything. I love Mondays. I should have said that. Fucking love Monday. You should have just hit him back with some Gary V or something like that. Yeah. Just something inspiring. Hey, man, no, nah, I'm here to, I'm, I'm just getting it out of my system before I tackle this day. Yeah. Before I get my hands on it. <laughs> That's what you should have done. Yeah. Or so that, that I love Mondays. Right. Uh, I love Mondays. You kidding me? The weekend was terrible. I went to a baby wake. <laughs> 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 I mean, how do you? He's trying to keep looking at his phone, but he doesn't know if he should look up at you. Oh, or dude, he... I'm so happy Monday's here. Yeah, actually, man, I love Mondays. I was at a baby wake over oh, the weekend. Oh my god, and... what a tragic yeah. weekend! Thank God Monday's here. <laughs> it's like I didn't. <laughs> but that's why elevator banter is so dangerous. Nobody wants a real. Nobody wants that. No, nobody wants that. No. But I can't do it. Like. It, it, comedically, it's, I don't know why it's it just is is different joking around than it is fucking being polite. I've never, but I've never been able to do that. I've never been able to just be because it's politely fake nonsense. comfortable. I mean, there's nothing comfortable about it. It's, I'm not comfortable in those situations, but just, that's why I avoid them. Some people them. are though, and it's not even the fake thing of it. Cause I can be fake as well as anybody. It's it's just I don't know why I just shut down and I I panic. It's a panic. Why not just keep your headphones on? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a very practical I mean, solution. I put my headphones on the second I get into that elevator. Because you, you want to be comfortable with he him. Want, you want to be that guy. Be, he wants another chance. He wants to be that guy that can have the back and forth, fun, Monday conversation. Oh, the worst. People, you want to be water cooler Jimmy. Yeah. People who can be funny on the elevator. Yeah. I'm in awe of them. You, you love don't have them. to be funny. Or, or, or just, but I mean, just comfortably. You just have to form a full sentence. That's a good point. I would like to start there. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy. You got, like, many comedy specials. When, when I'm on an elevator having polite banter, I know how people feel yeah. when they think about comedy. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I don't, I, it I could me. never. I don't, I don't like it. I don't understand. I, I don't could never. Do it. I'd love to watch people doing it. <laughs> I'd love to watch footage of polite elevator banter. Now on Netflix, it's just the security cam from the elevator, and it's just guys that are really, really good. Chatting and being yeah. good at it, and... Yeah, I'm not, but I'm. The, it comes from being uncomfortable in my own skin. Mm. I'm uncomfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm a twitchy disaster as it is. True. But I'm a mess. Right. But I've always been a fucking mess. I've never been fucking comfortable in my own skin, ever. I mean, the smile and nod will take you so much You're further. Probably right. Life. Yeah. Just don't even. Here's the thing. You might be, maybe you'd be more comfortable in your own skin if you just did what's natural to you. If you just did what you should be doing. Meaning... You wouldn't feel so uncomfortable if you weren't attempting to do something that clearly you were not put on this planet to do. That's true. And that's have polite conversation with anybody. Or fuck a woman. Or fuck a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe that's it. But I mean, there's little things you should be able to do. Little things like that are just uncomfortable. But it's, I mean, it's not just the elevator. You, I, I think one of the more telling things was when... Mark Norman came in that one time and said that all the young comics forever just thought you hated them. But I, and, and, <laughs> and it was just because... I'm just socially uncomfortable. But, <laughs> but it was not only... I, I'm not disabled. Like, I actually really like those guys. Right. Right. I was like, really? Like, I, I've never been rude. Like, I don't say mean shit to them. Right. You just kind of stay to yourself. I sit there. I think that they're all talking. I'll go, hey. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of them really want to talk to me. But why wouldn't they want but, to but talk I'm not, to you? But that's how I'm thinking. Like, they don't want to talk to me. Like, so I just leave. That's how I would think. Yeah, no, I totally get it. But you, I mean, why wouldn't a young comic want to talk to you? For what? Like, about what? Like, they, they got their friends and their thing. Like, for what? Like, I, I literally, that's how I feel. Because you're a fun guy. Because you're funny. And because you're, you've done things that they would aspire to do. I would never, it would never occur to me. It would you not. say that, it makes sense. But right. would, and in that moment, it would mm -hmm. never occur to me. 
Not that I don't want to be polite. No, like, no, no, I, I, totally I, get I always it. assume they don't like me. Like I, I literally <laughs> or don't give a fuck about me. Like I said hi to a comic, a recently young comic. I've thought of that since he said that. I'm like, maybe yeah. I came off that way. And uh, he's a guy I've seen. We we really very rarely said hello to each other, but but never a negative word. Sure. It's probably just like this guy doesn't like me. But then I said hello to him. I'm like, hey man. He goes, hey man. What? Like he was really friendly. I'm like, oh okay. It's just. Isn't that why? Because I've done that too. The narratives that you set up in you your think own head. Don't like you. A hundred percent. Like you, you take little, you take a little eye contact or lack of conversation or whatever it is. You just assume, oh, well, this person thinks that this person. And the minute you start a conversation, you're like, oh, this is there was nothing happening here. I made all that up. Yeah, or you, you just say hello and you like. It's really weird. The the things you just like, you just becomes the thing. Then like, oh, okay, that person doesn't like me, and it's just nonsense. Right. I always assume people don't like me. Right. I which mean, at times makes, of course, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. I still say I don't think that you should veer too far away from that assumption. It probably does. <laughs> <laughs> you come, you, Jim you comes across saying? intimidating if you don't know him. Very. Intimidating. I would never think that. Oh ever. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure, oh my God, you're, I would never. That would honestly. What, what, what? You know what it is. You're so sharp on the air that huh? it, <laughs> that if that you just you're afraid that you're going to sound stupid in front of you. I would never. Thank you. But I, would, I would never. Honestly, it's just it's just the opposite. I always feel like I don't really have much to say to this guy. He's going to think I'm a dick. I'm not going to bother him. Plus, you're kind of you twitch a lot, and when you twitch. I I'm I, I think that people may feel like oh I think he's getting ready to unload <laughs> no. like I think he's getting ready to he's holding it in yeah exactly like <laughs> no. I, oh my god he thinks like there is a there is a vibe I, mean, I kind of remember that when I was uh, younger there would be a vibe where when you talk when somebody when one talks to you they go oh he's gonna think I'm a fucking idiot like before every sentence I can't say this sentence he's gonna think I'm so stupid. Because Troy's right, because you have a you have a quickness and a sharpness about you, and you're twitching all the time. So it's like there's stuff happening in your head, <laughs> but it's really not. It's no, just, I it's mean now my, I know. This is my nerves are firing out nonsense, going move a little, huh? What? <laughs> right. <laughs> there's no reason for it. Right. So you're twitching, your eyes roll back, or whatever happens, and you're like, oh my god, he's moved on from whatever I'm saying oh. right now because he thinks that I'm so stupid. Oh, that's that's funny. It, 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 if you didn't say that, uh -huh. that would never have occurred to me. <laughs> exactly. Never. But I'm sitting there going, if you just had the conversation, everything would be fine. You'd realize that you weren't thinking that, and he wasn't thinking yeah. that, and it was all it was all different. So I started doing that more. I guess to the point, like when you said Mark Norman, Mark Norman had said that, I realized, like, wow, I'm coming off in a way I didn't I didn't mean to. You know, there is research that shows that more frequent small talk, even among those who identify as introverts, can make people happier it, because you feel connected like i don't ever feel like if i have sm small chit chat with somebody at work i don't mind that a mild conversation i mean it doesn't have to get into it, it to depth it does make you feel like you're a little bit more in touch with humanity yeah and you're just having a polite moment with a person right um because otherwise you're in your ivory tower naked in your apartment by yourself Sitting there doing characters, just being a goddamn fool by Be myself. Yeah, being a total asshole. <laughs> and I could see where you at times would feel separated from the human race. Yeah, but you I, know but what I, else it might be? Uh, you talk for a living, like here so and you, and in, in, yeah. In so comedy. you're trying to say that as far as Jim goes, he talks too much. Man, <laughs> he never much. shuts up. Yeah, but I like, said you talk. It's too not much. the craziest thing. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies to the original artists. <laughs> it's not the craziest thing to not want to talk after you've talked yeah. for so long in the morning. And but he wants at to. Night, but he yes, wants to. I know. Well, You're both that, right. No, he wants to be accepted. He wants to be liked. He doesn't want to talk. So he wants people to just sit there and go, I know that he, he could do this if he wanted to, but he's not doing no, it. No, yeah, I, I, and it's also not the craziest thing. You, you, you interact with some of the most brilliant people in, in comedy. Yeah, yeah, and and to, I appreciate that. Okay, I was talking more about like you know Colin and 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 all oh, of us. Yeah, no. yeah, uh, <laughs> boss, but, Bobby. Well, I was. Well, I didn't. I didn't want to start singling quickly after Colin Quinn. Singling people out. Yeah, well, Patrice. You know, <laughs> not as these, much anymore. No, but I still great talk conversations to with yeah. them. You, you 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 sit and you have great conversations with them, and and the 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 people that you're gonna have small talk with, they're not gonna give you that same level of 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 stimulation. Man. Yeah, but he can't do it. I mean, I that's couldn't true. Do it. He also you, can't. Do I can't it. do it with Colin either. I can't. I can't, I can't do polite banter. I'm more. Po I'm more happy if Colin walks in and just criticizes me and calls me uh, stupid. Then I'm like, all right. Well, at least I'm comfortable all here. All right, then forget everything I said. <laughs> no, yeah. but you know, it's funny. Colin had a very funny bit on polite elevator 
uh, on, on elevator response and social cues. I mean, that type of simple shit that happens every day. He f- he finds the funniest stuff and all that all that shit. Yeah, and, and you never forget it. It's like it's like Carlin esque in, in the ability to take those things that happen, and the things that you think that everybody has talked about but hasn't. And you're like, Jesus Christ, how did everybody miss that? But it's him? like, yeah, it's like the 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 observation of the minutia that when he says it, all of us recognize it as yes, we've all done that. And nobody's pointed it out. And no one, and that's the key. It's not like, hey, McDonald's burgers are good. It's like the type of stuff Carlin would do where he'd point something out and you'd go, oh my God, like, that's what, everyone else did miss that. Right. He'd go, am I right? Yes, you are. And how did none of us him. point that out? <laughs> but I wish I was, I just, honestly, I wish I was better at the, I'm, the, I'm the, a lot of times the same around even my friends. It's, it's just an, I'm being uncomfortable. It's mm-hmm. not uh, anything to do with anybody. But on the elevator, the fact that I shut down, Jen would laugh at me like, you suck at that. It's so great. No. I want to. I, I, I want to see it. Yeah, I hope you never get better. No, I won't. Yeah, <laughs> doing it worse. Like you're good. Yeah. At, you're good in like you're talking to a waitress or something because you'll get to make fun of whoever you're with. You'll make fun of me. Like you can be. You're very personable with the waitress. Well, he's playing to an audience, right? When you're leading, I'm a stud, so I'm trying to turn the chick right, on. That's not as much. <laughs> but when you're leading up to, it's a joke on whoever you're with. You'll go and you'll say. Uh, you'll start asking. You'll be very personable, but it's just so you can use the pronoun she when referring to myself. Yes, I will. You know what I yes. mean? So, like, you're, you're, you're in the zone, <laughs> but you're just getting to this place. Yeah. Or you'll be talking to the waitress, and you're having this great back and forth, but it's really just so you can point to me and act like I'm being picky about something and saying, he said he didn't want that. Yeah, he said he didn't, you know. Yeah, of <laughs> right? course. So you can do it. It's just the context. Yeah. Uh, Chris, the teacher, wants to make an observation. Of course... Chris, the teacher, he might actually be uh, the perfect person to make an observation because he's uh, interacted with you on a very limited he basis. He has, but he's also a fine booker of the Chip Chipperson podcast. He is. He did a good job. What's up, Chris? Yeah, Chris is the one that hey. booked the uh, Christmas Carol group, right, Chris? For the Christmas show? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Awesome job. And and I only told Roland this, but I actually saw the lead singer of it topless in the green room. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> um, first of all, congratulations on number one hundred coming up soon, Chippa. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's a couple more weeks. Second of all, all right, Jim, this is your problem, bro, and it's not really that big of a problem. It, you are so fast, and you're such a just a visceral comedian, and you crush everybody, right? Like everybody on the show. So when we meet you, that's what we expect to get. But the thing mm. is, you're a fucking paradox. Because you are such a kind little boy with such a clean little white asshole and like such soft arms. And what? Thank you. Kind, you're where, so kind. Where are we going with this? Thank you. Really, it really throws people for a loop because when then you meet a guy like Ross and you're like, hey, I'm a big fan. He's like, nice shirt, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you are like, hey, thanks so much, buddy. So like, I met you the first time, dude. I was just stumbling, muttering prick. And I'm like, oh, you're such an, I like, didn't even want to ask you for a picture. And you were so kind and so nice. I don't think that's what people are expecting. So people come up to you kind of with their guard up because they, if they, if they show any weakness, they feel like you're going to smash them. But that's not who you are because you're just a nice boy. Thank you. No, I'm a nice fella. I'm a, the, by my, as far as my asshole being pristine, God, way off base. Right. It's been. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. It has been worn the fuck out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a highway for fingers. <laughs> yeah. In out, in out, in out all day. It's ridiculous. James in, in, in South Carolina has a let's, question too. Let's go to James, which is not necessarily true. No, no, South Carolina, James. Oh, that's Jason. Oh, okay, let's talk to James first. I'll whoever you want. I'm sorry. Too late. Jason, what's up, Jason? Hey, good morning, guys. Hello. Good morning. Hi, buddy. Hey, uh, what I can't figure out, Jeff, is how are you able to reach out to people like Robert De Niro and let him basically lay you across his lap thank you in the ass, but you can't talk to a dude on an elevator? It's odd that every... Every every caller that's called up trying to cure Jim's problem, it does go back to the pristine asshole every time. It really does. My hiney is somehow involved. Yes. No, but even that, dude, that was different because I, with I was so nervous. Like it's almost like it's such an overwhelming thing that you click into automatic pilot and you just become comfortable. It's a really weird thing. It's 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 the step right before abject terror like in those okay. moments. So for some reason, it just works. But uh, I would if I saw him in a restaurant. Even though I've talked to him a lot, I still would probably be awkward. Like, if I just bumped into him, 
uh, like right now, if he was outside, we would say hello, and I'd be like, uh, uh, right. You know, I'm I'm very awkward with with uh, everybody. But anyway, anyway, I, I don't know why. Yeah, I, I don't know why. Thank you, Jason. All right. That elevator shit, man. That shows you a lot. Like I just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. You are you're. Maybe you're just a little more comfortable when you have full control of the conversation, meaning it's you and a microphone and there's people there watching you. Or it's like this, where you and I are talking to each other. We're talking to Troy, we're talking to Travis, but really we're talking to an audience. Yeah, we are. It, it's, it's, that's why I like the live radio so much, because you know that people are, are listening live and you can't fix it. But you and I talk on the phone. Like, I mean, that's true. all you guys I talk to off air, too. It's like we don't just not speak off air. We actually talk fairly frequently off air, too. That's so true. So it's easier. Yeah. For everybody that was upset that we took uh, uh, Thursday off, you guys would have been really upset if you found out Jim and I FaceTimed, I think, every day over the we weekend. We did, yeah. So, so yeah, there were, we were still doing stuff together, We have a planned day here and here. there. People act like it's this giant thing. Like, we, 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 I guess you guys don't know when we're doing it, but we know. Yeah. We're not, <laughs> just, not, we're not just deciding not to show up. <laughs> I haven't taken it. I can't remember having taken a sick day. I, no, but I think it's because we... Just took, uh, we took the week off for, uh, what, to do that mystery show that took place inside well, that the is true, establishment yeah. that serves drinks. We technically that needed to be saved. only took one day that we could have worked, and that was a travel day anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was sitting there uh, looking at what was going on, and I think that we, I think that every... Monday, we should try to establish who had the worst weekend in the world. Because it seems like every time we come back, yep. there's always like this yep. list of people. Because I was sitting there debating just to myself, just like going over everything that had gone on over the weekend. And I was like, who had the worst weekend of everybody in the world? As a matter of fact, Troy, we should probably have some production. Maybe next week we come in with some just a big stinger. The worst weekend in the world. Yeah, there's been a couple of bad ones. A couple bad ones. And I feel like every Monday, somebody has it. But, man, it was rough for a few people this weekend. It really was. Uh, for, first, that, that old lady getting soccer kicked in the head by that fucking... That <laughs> yeah, fucking, I saw that. He's a big motherfucker. Like, you don't realize how big that dude is yeah. until you see him... Because he's been arrested, he's been cuffed, and you see him next to the, you're like, holy shit, he's probably 6'5". That was that video that went all over uh, Twitter and everything over the weekend. What, what explanation, because he fucking, it, it turn, the camera turns on, something's already happened. And they got the guy, right? Oh yeah, they got him. Yeah. Um, he fucking kicked his, he was 78 years old, and he fucking booted her in the head. Like, what explanation can he possibly give? I wasn't thinking. Like you want his explanation? Please, yes. She was a homeless woman who refused to, to move on the subway and he says that she threatened him with a knife and threatened to kill his wife and daughter who were with him and he kind of lost it yeah i don't uh she wasn't just some kind old granny you know making her way home that's what he, is that now has anybody else said that i don't know if anybody else has said that but i do believe that she is a homeless woman yeah. Yeah. I mean, she got all. The, she looks like a homeless woman. Yeah. She has all the bags with her. She's wearing. A... Yeah. So I mean, his explanation wouldn't shock me. Did she deserve to get booted in the face? Right. I don't know. But you know, his explanation doesn't shock me. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. If if an old homeless woman threatened to stab my wife and son, I would not like her. Did she pull a knife out? I don't know. I don't. I, yeah. I don't think that she pulled a knife out. I'd, I'd probably just move cars. I would, yeah, or even just move down the car a little bit, because I'd yeah. say the odds of you actually stabbing my wife and son are very, very small. You're a homeless woman, and you're 78 years old. I don't, I don't really perceive you as a threat. I probably would stop myself before I kicked her in the head, knowing just the, uh, the optics. She'd probably stop you. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. You think she could block my jujitsu kicks? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. She literally, she would have fucking leg locked you while you stood there, <laughs> put you on the ground. <laughs> yeah. What now? The news is showing. Well, of course. This is why the news fucking stinks. They're showing this this footage to people on the street to get reaction. What What do they expect people to say? <laughs> wow, that guy's good. He's a martial artist. I love that. Here's a video of a of a fit man kicking a 78 year old woman in the head. Good or bad? The, what pieces of shit they are in the news. I'm going to say bad. Just yeah. showing people this footage. Everybody in this story is a piece of shit. There's three people filming, filming it, it not yeah. doing anything. Yeah. 
Although, what would, well, I think, I, what would I do is, I, I don't know. You you might say you I would like to at least jump in between them. Like, I wouldn't hit the guy because he's giant. But maybe I would jump in, but I don't even know what I would do. I don't know if I would get involved, but I also don't think I would film it. You know, I'll because, pretend I didn't see it. Yeah, I would just keep to myself and try to get to the yeah, next stop. Yeah, because I'm really not trying to get kicked in the face myself. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I got a nice face. But, well, that's a stretch. Yeah, he does. Thank you, Jim. You ever seen those beady little eyes without those glasses on? <laughs> that it's is true. Something out of a horror he movie. He looks like something that escaped from a cage in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> Travis. <laughs> a fucking, they were doing Propecia experience. <laughs> oh, boy. Experience. I know. <laughs> Cock oh. sucker. Small talk, Jimmy. <laughs> When you walk through the garden, <laughs> <laughs> Travis looks like <laughs> Travis looks like the us version of Travis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the tethered version of yeah, me? dude. If you just walked around in a red shirt, get, <laughs> snipping a bunch of scissors or whatever, I would believe that. Oh my God, what happened to Travis? Um, but I think my nomination. I've got a couple of nominations sure. for worst weekend in the world. Oh now. I'm having a tough time saying it's not Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand is getting my nomination for having the worst weekend in the world. I think Jeffries had a worse one. Jim Jeffries. I love that. I think that those are probably my two. So Barbara Streisand's is, uh, (laughs) Barbara Streisand, of all the takes on leaving Neverland, there was at least a debate going back and forth. Lots of people had lots of takes. I didn't realize that one person could have a take on the Leaving Neverland documentary. That's the Michael Jackson documentary with the kids talking about, you know, their their anals and their dicks and everything. You remember it, Troy. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara figured out the one take that everybody could disagree with and call her a piece of shit for. She is apologizing for it, but Barbara's take... Was do you? I mean, I, her original quote was uh, before she <laughs> apologized. She, she said uh, of Michael Jackson. Didn't she say, by the way, about the Holocaust too? Like, sure, it was bad, but a free train ride is a free train ride. She also <laughs> said that. I think she always tries to put a positive spin on things. She does, and that's good. That's where Babs is good. Yeah. Uh, but she talked to the Sunday Times in the UK, which was a huge mistake, as it turns out. Um, she writes, or she said. His sexual needs were his sexual needs. Right there, you go, oh, no, Babs, where are we going? What the fuck does that even mean? His sexual needs were his sexual needs. Go fuck yourself. Okay, she writes, his sexual needs were his sexual needs. Coming from whatever childhood he has or whatever DNA he has. So she's not saying he's not a pedophile, but she is saying if he is a pedophile, she'll excuse him. Yeah, it is what it is. (laughs) And that sentence on its own. Horrible. 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 Then she follows it up with, you can say molested, but those children, as you heard say, they were thrilled to be there. They both married, they both have children, so it didn't kill them. (laughs) And you're like, oh my god. This is... So she's sitting there. It was one thing, the defenders of Michael... You can say molested. What else would you call it if a kid's 12? It's just molested. When you are handling a child's anal, it's molestation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but it didn't kill him. No, it did. he's not a murderer. He's, he's a, a molester. He's never killed anybody. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, if, by Barbara's definition, she's saying he may be a pedophile, but he's not a murderer. I like Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> she makes sense. Well, Paul, even you have to say, the documentary never said that Michael was a murderer. It that's said he was right. a pedophile. A, that's a pack of lies. <laughs> it's, it's not just... Oh, you have somebody come over, you do a little examination. Babs is right. It's not just either you're a good person or you're a murderer. Memories (laughs) wiped out of my mind. (laughs) Misty watercolored memories that I can't recall. (laughs) Yeah, she's a good lady. She's sitting there. The the defense on, on Michael after leaving Never land from everybody was uh that they go uh, okay they're lying if you don't believe these two guys if you don't believe wade robson and whatever the other guy's name was then michael wasn't ever found guilty of anything you could sit there and go look the guy's dead he can't defend himself i don't believe those two leave it alone right okay that's at least an argument 
Babs is saying she believes them. But. But. They had fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's going, what about the Ferris wheel? Yeah, sure, they had their heinies fucked, but wouldn't you like to eat candy and watch fun movies all night? <laughs> yeah. Also, they got married. Yeah. She's sitting yeah. there. They had kids. Yeah. He didn't remove their ability to produce sperm. That's right. That's right. They had kids. They had wives. Clearly, they're fine. Everything turned out okay. Everything's fine. Here's Bab's defense. Guys, all's well that ends well. Yeah. Okay? And all is well. I mean... I've never heard anybody come out with that. Are people, this is what we forget too, are sometimes people drunk or a little tipsy when they give interviews and just it, and shit just flies out? I don't know if she drinks or not, but it, like that's the type of thing you'd say. It was almost like when Jimmy the Greek said what he said. Yeah. Because he was fucking, he was tanked. Sounds like the ramblings of a drunken or, fool. Or you're just saying it not realizing that somebody's going, just jotting shit down. Like when Louis C.K. was saying all that stuff about Sarah Palin. On the plane, and, tweeting, yeah. And, but he was like, look, I was drinking on the plane, yeah. and that's why I deleted the tweets. Because, yeah, I mean, maybe she was drinking. And or it could be both. She's just so. I think that. Would she have dementia at seventy eight? She's so out of touch. I think that when you're famous for a certain amount of time, when you're Barbara Streisand famous, yeah, you just become so out of touch and have so many people around you worshiping you that nobody's there to say, "Whoa, what are you? What are you listening to? What you're saying right now?" What well, are you Diana Ross had about? a shit quote too. Well, no, Diana Ross brought it back to brought it back to the music. Yeah. Diana Ross, uh, she said uh, that uh, people need to uh, relax uh, with the Michael Jackson stuff. This is what her quote was. Uh, this is what's uh, she's her tweet. I'm, and Diana Ross, of all people, should be tweeting. Uh, Diana Ross tweeted, "This is what's on my heart this morning." I believe and trust that Michael Jackson was and is a magnificent, incredible force to me and to many others. Stop in the name of love. Which, I mean, in Diana, I'm assuming that That's was her song. That was Diana's song, yes? Yeah. At least she had a smart take on it. Is she hoping that, like, look, people are more, more people were listening to R. Kelly after that doc on Spotify. Maybe we can get some Stop in the Name of Love numbers up or something Get the streams up i didn't even, yeah i didn't even know what she's saying people that feel like this like, like, like if you say hey look i want to listen to the guy's music <clears throat> fine listen to his music just say that though right say look he probably did fuck kids and i think he fucked kids but i'm gonna listen to his music anyway at least make that statement i'm gonna separate the art from the artist yeah if you can do that and maybe that's the way to do it okay you but see, just say you're doing that that's what i i, I can buy if they believe, if people believe it, they believe it. I can at least entertain the conversation of I don't believe those two guys because they said something else prior. Right. Okay. If that's where you stand, okay. But the people that are going, well, he's dead, so you should just stop talking about it. No. If a if a dead guy molested you, you still have to get through this stuff. Like you still just because the guy's dead doesn't mean the molestation goes away. If a it dead, helps, it helps though. <laughs> Okay. Well, no, 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 I mean, in like in in just the court of public opinion, it helps in the court him of public opinion so much. Yes, that he's dead. Because yes, this has not affected him. I, I thought you were saying from your experience, no, 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 your no, no, molester no. is dead. No, I'm driving around uh, CBS 101. What were you on. driving around in? My automobile. <laughs> and uh, that's not even how the song goes. <laughs> Why did you do that voice just now? My automobile. What do you, I hate when he does voices. When you walk through the garden. <laughs> Why did you say my automobile like that, Jim? Did you hear the way he said? I didn't it? understand why he said that. Just trying to because you, you know you don't know that song. No, but that's not how the song goes. Riding around in my automobile. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we have now got the second in the best of Travis compilation that we're putting together. Uh, Rob, you're already isolating that, yes? Yep. <laughs> hey, is the new system working yet? No. We're we're moving over there this week okay. instead of last yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, but they're playing Billie Jean. Middle of the day. Nothing's nothing's changed. No, because it's not because there you can't get you can't get this to be concrete. All you no. you can either believe people or not believe people. But the guy's dead. When he was alive, he was found not guilty. So if you want to not believe yeah. these guys, yeah. you can. And I also think that his legend is just too big to destroy. It's too. Yeah. It is. It's, I really do. It's too. It's too big. It's too fat to fail. But we watched. Uh, there was a Latoya, <laughs> a Latoya Jackson interview where she looks crazy, like years and years and years ago in the early nineties. And you watch it now, and you're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, she sounds perfectly sane. She's saying everything that we're all saying now. Yeah, yeah. And like it sounded like it was sour grapes back then. But you're going, "Oh, maybe she was." 
Maybe she was trying to tell the world. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think Diana Ross's only bad thing here is that she had to shoehorn in the name of her song. That's, yeah. She might not believe the accusers. Barbara Streisand, to sit there and go, of course I believe the accusers. But seriously, you know, they seem like they're having a great time. Yeah. They kept showing up. <laughs> and there's no sort of... I wonder what her... what uh, Maybe Barbara Streisand is one of these people that believes that statutory rape is not a real thing. That she goes, look, maybe she's a Nable person. Maybe. I mean, because this is the argument that Barbara Streisand's argument is the same argument that, that Nambla makes. Nambla, the North American man, man boy, boy love, love association. Come on, you're, stop you're, pretending to fumble. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> the North American man boy love association yeah. would argue that it's real love between children and adults that, you know, that the children want to sure, be there. Sure, you've made that argument. I have not made that argument as I am not a member of that group. I do not support that group in any way, shape, or form. I thought I made that clear. No. Okay, well, I'm glad I have Nambla. Nambla. <laughs> Lord, I was born a Nambla man. <laughs> but Barbara is taking on those same arguments. No? Yeah. I mean, Barbara's argument fits that narrative. It certainly yeah? does. Yeah. She, but she apologized. She did. She said, uh, I am profoundly sorry for any pain or misunderstanding. By the way, I hate apologies like that. What no, misunderstanding? Nobody misunderstood anything. No, you said that. You, that's what you said. There's only one way to interpret it. Yeah. Uh, any pain or misunderstanding I caused by not choosing my words more carefully. That wasn't the issue either. Yeah. It's not the choice of words. It's the meaning behind the words that were chosen. You sat there and said, like, you, you, there, there's no other words that you could have put in there. You didn't mean to say something else. No. No, these are the words that would define the statement that you made. So, this just sucked for her, but this will go away. It was stupid. She's 78. What the fuck are they going to do to Barbara Streisand? She no. didn't physically and do anything. She just said one dumb thing. She still sell out wherever she goes. Doesn't matter. No, because all the, all, the all the Babs fans, you didn't under she didn't mean that when she said it. She didn't mean, I mean, you know. I wish she had done a Diana Ross thing, though, and just snuck in the, the like, uh, uh, a, a reference to memories or something like that. Yeah. You know, sneak in the title of your song. Get it. If you're going to quote, put out a quote about Michael Jackson and you're a singer, get in a little plug ski. Yeah. A little you something know? for yourself. A little something for yourself. <laughs> no, I don't think her weekend was as bad. Jim had a bad weekend. Jim Jeffries is also on the list for sure of worst weekend in the world. Jim Jeffries, this video comes out. He's interviewing this guy. Avi is. Um, I'd never heard I, of him. I had neither. I guess he's an Australian. I guess he's a very uh, conservative. Uh, uh, is he anti-immigration or Muslim immigration, or is he just? I don't know people say uh, he's hardcore a hardcore right winger. I think he's definitely a hardcore right winger. People say he's an asshole, but I don't know anything about him. But he might be an asshole. But regardless of if he's an asshole or not, by the way, if he is an asshole, it makes Jim Jeffries look even worse because if somebody's an asshole, you shouldn't have to be duplicitous to make them look like an the th asshole. The thing that's really bad in this. Is that like he said that beforehand he asked him not to put him with a Nazi and not to um, not to take one answer and put it with another one. Right. Another question. And that's something that shows do interviews do. I think Opie and Anthony sort of Riley did that to them. Mm -hmm. Like that's something that's been happening for a long time. That's why I, that's why depending on celebrities, if you're a big enough celebrity that you can call your own shots, a lot of people won't do taped interviews. Because they know that uh, I know what you're going to do here, especially for shows like this. Someone I was reading something about that. Like, if you don't want stuff like that to happen, if you do those interviews, only do it if there's like a digital clock or something behind you. So people know the time code or something. Like, yeah, one of those things where they can't fuck with. Like, they can put questions in a different order. Well, they're going to edit an interview. You're not going to have a one-hour interview. So he knows that going in. But to have your answer for one question put with another is terrible. Or you do it like this guy did it. You put your own camera. WWE, uh, they had a thing where they did, I think, it was, I think it was CNN. John Cena did some interview. They were doing some show about wrestling or whatever, and it was like, oh, the dangers of blah, 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 yeah. you know. And, and they, had, uh, they were talking to John Cena, I believe, about steroids. And they completely changed his answer around so it looked way worse. And WWE was smart enough to have their own camera running the whole time. Right. So they released the whole interview. They said, here's the interview from start to finish. Here's what actually happened. And CNN had completely 
completely fumbled up with the tapes to make it look like something else. Yeah, and this, this, the reason this is so bad is because this hits a bigger issue. This yes. is like, this goes into like the whole idea of what fake news, even though it's a comedy show, it's not technically news, but still, if, with something like the New Zealand shooting, to take what a guy said, and Jim is not the editor for the show, so I, you gotta say that too, I don't know how much hand he has in the editing, or if he just does the interview. But you do know, and they if, put it together. That's, if you're sitting there watching, you know what's on your show. Right. You yeah, know you what happened in the interview. He's the last cut. Right. So, like, you, you he, he's got to watch this sure. and know. It's one show a week. It's not like. Right. That's, yeah. This isn't yeah. what happened, but this is the narrative. I don't think he made the edits, but I think he was aware. Of the tone it was saying? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, it's, it's very bad because it taps into the whole fake news thing of taking a guy's view. Like, when you saw the guy's answer to Muslim Hey, look, who, who says this borders? Uh, you know, in theory, you're right. Like, he actually gave a pretty reasonable answer. So the and guy to put a crazy answer after right. what he said, you understand why, why, like, that's the whole idea of what fake news is, is like, you're making this guy look like he's so anti Muslim that he's uh, not going to give you, he just made it look like he was going to give you a fucking, a really nasty shit answer, but he gave a really reasonable answer. And people don't want to see their views misrepresented. So they look like radical lunatics when they're not. The guy's name is Avi, Avi Yamini. And he was interviewed by Jim Jeffries uh, about, you know, because his views on immigration and, uh, and uh, Islam and all this stuff. And he did this. About a month before, before the New Zealand shooting. Or even more than that. I thought he said a couple of months ago. I think that was I, even before that. I think I, I think he said a month. But okay. regardless, it was enough a time before ago, yeah. that it had nothing to do. So, like Jim just said, uh, Avi made this video where he told everybody, I told Jim Jeffries and his producers, don't put me next to like neo-Nazis and don't use my answers and change them and put different questions in. And they said, okay. But they did both of those things, and so Avi actually had a secret, had his phone yeah. positioned without the producers knowing, and shot the entire interview that he and Jim Jeffries did together. He, he said it was like an hour long. He released a couple of minutes of it. I think he said he's going to release the whole thing on Patreon, which is smart. Um, and But already, in the couple of minutes, it makes it makes Jim look really bad, because you're right. It's not a news show, but... The whole reason Comedy Central does these shows is because people do go to them to get informed. Sure, the you Daily know? Show. Yeah, people that, do watch the or Daily or Show when it was on. Like you know, you're getting a slant on it, but you still feel like you're getting news from it. The Daily Show's claim to fame was that young people were going to the Daily. Originally, it was just a total goof news show. It was yeah. almost like The Onion, you know, where nothing right. was taken seriously. It was a goof. Then young people actually started watching the Daily Show as a news show, and that's where. Uh, What's his face? Uh, 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 John Stewart rose to the fame that he rose to on that show because he actually did a news show that was comical in nature. But this is where like the, the networks, like <clears throat> Comedy Central and everything, go wrong. You don't have to like what this guy Avi says, and you can make fun of his views, and you can make fun of him, but don't paint him like don't you don't have to edit his answers mm -mm. to do like you can do it honestly you you can say like yeah this is what he said and i don't like you can you can have it be an honest exchange where you're at least letting him say what what he wants to say and not editing what he says yeah that's the issue that if the guy's an asshole and that's why you're having him on the show i have no problem with that whatsoever right but you have to give him the opportunity to make himself look like an asshole. Yeah. You can't go you, you can't do it for him by, by especially behind the scenes. Editing. Yeah. Yeah. So he aired this thing where, again, like Norton just said, uh, they go and he asks a question about uh, uh, borders. And what aired on Comedy Central was this sort of super extremist, you know, closed borders, blah, blah, blah answer. But the actual answer to the question, which he aired on his YouTube video, was a completely kind of rational, yeah. let's have a discussion about this answer. Yeah. You know, where he said, look, you know, I, I, I get what you're saying, but you can't live in a world where there's just no borders anywhere. Because Jim said, who do you, Jim said, who's to say where a person can live? And he goes, borders? I mean, and, and he kind of, again, the answer was like, uh, hey, in theory, you're right, but that's not human nature. I'm paraphrasing. But it was a pretty reasonable answer. He was saying, I'm against the idea of just there being open borders in every country ever because human nature dictates that that doesn't work and it hasn't worked. And I don't think that that's even an extremist point of view. I would think... The extremist point of view 
is the idea that there should never be any borders. That's an extremist point of view. Like Sam will say white is right and white only. I don't always agree with you. How did you we that. go there? I'm just saying. That's you not say that. what I said. Oh, all right. Sorry. No, misunderstood. you misunderstood completely. Uh, I apologize. And you're taking me a little out of context, too. That's not how I feel. But it does. I mean, it, it looks really bad because the integrity in Jim, in Jim Jeffrey's show and the reason why people watch, like, it's funny. It's funny because it's true, you know, and it's, it's supposed it's, to be anyway. And it's also this guy had nothing to do with the Christchurch murders. The, uh, this guy, no, had, this guy had not was nowhere near that. This was taped before that. He tried to tie him in. Yeah, well, there's no need to tie this guy into that. And then I think really? in an effort to kind of make Avi comfortable to say things that might have been anti-Muslim, Jim Jeffries was like. Uh, Show what did he have like a he had drawn a photo of Muhammad. They don't show the drawing, but he's saying he drew it. Um, and he was just saying like I don't like wearing a burger. Like any of the stuff Jim is saying to goof off or be funny. Like, like now they're going back and grabbing his old bits, which I don't like. It's like look if you're saying no, stuff to I be don't funny, like it's either. one thing. Who gives a fuck? It's just it's just stand up because he makes fun of every religion. I don't think that there's anything to that. But even the people that would want to defend him, like even people on the left, can't defend him because of that. Because of that. So it's like he's in a bad spot because people who would defend him, like, hey, um, you know, he didn't uh, mean it or, again, you know, whatever they would say to defend him, they can't defend him. And, you know, the right is just, yeah, this because, is fake news and this is what they do to us all the time. Right. And you know that that's what's going to happen. I don't understand this idea that, that sometimes when you're trying to prove a certain point of view is wrong and you'll do it at all costs, when people find out that you're lying about it, all you're doing is making this uh, other point of view is so much stronger. Yeah, you don't like when you see Bill Maher does interviews, right? I just keep thinking. I'm sure the quote was around disinfectant's the best sunlight. I don't know who made that up. It's a great quote, whoever did. Wait, what's the quote? Disinfectant is the best sunlight. Oh, sunlight's the best disinfectant. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. There you go. Uh, yes, yeah, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Just let somebody say what they want. Like, like you don't have to edit what they're saying. To, if, if you think their point of view is so stupid or mm -hmm. so fucked up, let them say it, and other people will have the same reaction if they're. If their view is fucked up, I think that that's a hundred percent right. And Bill Maher that's is right. A disinfectant great... is the best sunlight. <laughs> what a cunt I am! <laughs> <laughs> but Bill Maher is a great example. Him having Milo on, everybody said he was a scumbag for having Milo on, and I believe that Milo doing Bill Maher's show, Milo Yiannopoulos, was the worst thing that Milo ever did because it's exactly what you just said, Norton. He put sunlight. On this point of view that shouldn't have had, you can't put that much mainstream onto some of these sort of, uh, uh, I don't want to say rat, extremist points of view. Because what happens is people who aren't in your base become aware of you, and then, then the enemy starts to build, and the mob starts to build. And if you just allow people, if they're that bad, if you just allow people to show themselves... You have to have faith. And this is what the left, uh, I, I think it's more the left than the right. But this is what the left's problem is, that they feel like audiences have to be spoon-fed. Well, this is bad, and here's why, as opposed to just having faith that if you show somebody at their truth, the general public will be able to determine for themselves what's right and wrong. That's where I've noticed most of the of speech policing coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the right doesn't do it. Uh, I've just noticed most of it coming from the left, and it's it, it really bothers me. Yeah. You don't need to do it. You don't need to tell somebody what they can't fucking say right. or edit them so they sound worse than they are. Like, if that guy is a very extreme guy, but he's fairly reasonable, all right, well, make him look fucking fairly reasonable. Or let just give let him, the point of view be what it is and let people come to their own conclusion. Give him a live mic. Do it live. Like, give him a live microphone right. and actually have the conversation with him. So if he's, if he's a monster... People who watch that show will go, will be able to say that guy's a monster. Yeah. You don't have to mix around his questions and answers and whatnot to try to prove this thing that yeah. should be easy to prove. If a person's a monster, it should not be that difficult to prove. Yeah, and you know, and Jim's a friend. You know, I, I like Jim so. It's, it's like you don't want to see this happen to a guy you like. Right, me too. So there's no satisfaction in, in seeing it with a guy mm -mm. I, I like a lot. But it ties into a much bigger issue for people, and that's why this has caught so much because there's so much talk in the last couple of years about the uh about the press and about the media and i'm and the, this was said to me privately so I, but let's just say somebody who has taken a beating mm -hmm. in the public eye in the last few years is it rich voss uh no the public eye. i see um <laughs> who hates trump this person hates trump okay and said the one thing trump is right about is the press the one thing 
Like they, they agree with nothing he has said, but the one thing that he's right about is the media. They are fucking, it's disgusting the way they behave. Uh, they, they, they all edit stuff. Uh, again, Zimmerman, I think, was a, was, a, was, a, was a shit. But you didn't have to edit his audio to make him look worse, I mean, like NBC did. It's a great example. Zimmerman is the, is the prototypical person that if you just put the spotlight on him, he's going to prove to the world what a, what a, what a fuckface he is. And all he's done since Trayvon has proved what a total fuckface of a person he but is. But you did not have to edit that fucking audio for exactly. me to get the point. Exactly. To make it look like he was saying something worse. That's, that's such sneaky shit. It's already there. Like, it's, it's there for you. Just show it. And if you're the news, or if you're a, a, a show that's supposed to inform people... Yeah. You're not supposed to have a conclusion in mm -mm. mind. Mm -mm. And you're not supposed to make the news by walking around showing the video of the old lady getting kicked on. What do you think? How the fuck is that news? This asshole's not part of the story. Some guy walking out of a 7-Eleven. Yeah. That's not the story. Yeah. What do you think? Just I wish one person would go, that's great. <laughs> She must have really just one person I would love to see respond that way. Look at the footprint on her forehead. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just uh it 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 it, it does you're right. It does suck to see it happen to somebody that you know. But you sit there and you're going like like Jim, like why would you do this? Like I would love to have him back on the show because that was my question like what what are you doing, man? Why you don't have to do this? Why? Why are you going this route with it? Yeah, you, know? you don't. You don't need to do it, especially to tie it into something like uh, a massacre. This guy. This guy's views. He's not. This guy's. Not, I don't think he's calling for any. And again, I. I know only what I've seen in this video. I haven't gone out and watched a lot of this shit. But he just seems like he's a guy who's a conservative when it comes to the fucking borders. And everyone who's a conservative when it comes to the borders, yeah. is not uh, a, a hateful person who despises. Everyone coming in. You don't have to make hateful people look hateful. Even they do it on their own. But is like, he even hateful? Have, but that's what I mean. If he was, you don't. If a person is hateful, and like I said, I don't know anything about him. But if he is a hateful dude to the point that it's harmful, you don't need to make him look that way. He'll do it himself. And you just sit there and you let it happen. I don't even like though when comedy shows edit interviews around to get to punchlines. Like, I, if it's a real interview, it's one thing if it's a fake interview and it's just for the goof, then of course, do you know, you write it, do yeah. whatever editing you want. But if you're interviewing somebody on a comedy show, you know, I, I don't even like when they, when they mix it up then because you're like, oh, the, the joke was in the fact that this is true. If it's not true, then that's not as funny. This guy, um, he's saying that he's going to sue Jim Jeffries. That probably won't work just because i'm get, i'm guessing when you sign a release you're signing away your rights to whatever i mean who the fuck knows what's in the fine print but they probably cover every angle in those contracts and i would also imagine that because it's labeled a comedy show you have certain yeah abilities to you know to to air things certain ways there is not a, a journalistic responsibility to tell the truth legally yeah i would love to know what what comedy central they, they have to respond to it well, yeah, they'll have to. I mean, we were talking about it over the weekend, but, uh, you know, you talk about people catching on to this thing. It's got like almost a million and a half views on YouTube. And when you're doing interviews, if you're, if you're being interviewed, it is a good idea to tape the interview so they cannot. Yeah. And, and there's been times where things are done. I think this was absolutely 100% done on purpose to make mm -hmm. him look bad. There's times when you do an interview and they just, they just chop it and they don't even realize they're, they're doing something that makes you look Bad, but I've, I've watched what they've done with certain things like, oh man, what the fuck are they, they're Dude. clickbaiting or they, it's not necessary to do that, but you know, they do it. I, I wonder if they'll, uh, say anything if it doesn't catch on. I mean, I know that the video's got a lot of views. Meaning it's caught it, on in that circle. It's on Breitbart, it's right. on, it's on very few websites. Like, it's not a mainstream story. Which, by the way, goes to the point of the people criticizing it. The fact yeah. that it's not a mainstream story, because yeah. if this were happening to, you know, the other side, if for instance... Fox News, not, not Fox News, if, if, you know, a conservative entertainment show. You say. can't think of one. Isn't that, the uh, fucking, isn't that amazing? Yeah. No one, there isn't one. <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Every but, fuck, every entertainment show has to have the same angle behind it. It's crazy. If there were a conservative entertainment yes, show. If the business would allow that to happen.
Yeah, if there were conservative entertainment, if Crowder were doing it, if Louder with Crowder, wherever he go. is, I don't even know if he's on YouTube anymore. If yeah, he is. Is he still on YouTube? Good. Yeah, yeah I think they took down his feed. The one I, I did, I, I, um, I made an appearance when he was doing the Oscars, but I think they they took him down, and we had to do it somewhere else because they, it was his live feed. Oh, so he doesn't? Yeah, because I think you it's get just a, that nice. I don't think it's permanently. When you get a strike against you, they they take down your ability to stream live. Uh, for a period of time. He puts a lot of effort into his show. Yeah, he does. I it's, like Crowder. That's how he makes his living. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if Crowder were sitting there uh, editing interviews to make, you know, liberal people look worse than they actually are, I, I think it would be a big story. Uh, absolutely. If he if he had done that to yeah. somebody, yeah, you're right. Yeah, especially if he was, if, if he was you know, sneaking in uh, uh, points of view about Islam, that would be very bad for him. I'm trying to think of an example. Like, that would be... More mainstream than Crowder because it would be on TV, but not as big as like a Fox News. There's got to be somebody on the. I mean, what is Tommy? Like, what is Tommy Lauren doing now? Who's that? The, the the blonde. You know, she was she's like a big conservative. Uh, oh, I don't even know who she is. Or if I do, I can't remember. She was on uh, Glenn Beck's network for a while, and now I think she's on Fox News's yeah, digital network. I think she's network. a Fox News contributor. Yeah, and she does a show on their digital platform. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't know, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't go well. Um, no. But it is. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's I, I mean, because well, no I one can defend him. Yeah, what justification could you? Because have? you can't justify that. Uh, the fact that he doesn't do the editing is probably correct. But the bottom line is, he does know the tone. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing that you're doing this with a, an interview you've taped a month before. And you're talking about the New Zealand massacre, like the, like like somehow a guy like this had something to do with it. It's right. not fair at all. Trump supporters also, I mean, Trump critics also had a very bad weekend. Oh boy, did they! Very bad weekend. They came in. If we're ranking the worst weekend, we got uh, Jim Jeffries. We've got Barbara Streisand. Hers was not good. We've got woman who got a footprint across her face in the subway. And Trump critics had a real rough one. Just just in the closer. Because the Mueller report finally uh, came out. Although, it's not the full report. It's not the full report. It's just a summary. Let's wait until we see the full report. Can't people just admit they might be <laughs> wrong? Can't they just fucking admit well, there's that a biased they might person. be wrong? There's a biased person writing the summary. God almighty. So, uh, the summary came out of the uh, Mueller report. Now, the report is very, very long. So that's why I know I've read it twice. It's not out. The full well, report is well, whatever. <laughs> sent to me. Well, whatever. I got an advanced copy. It was on a PDF. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got a PDF of it. Um, and yeah, the summary came out. They give it to a guy. The guy spent two days reading it, and that was the first thing. Well, forty-eight hours to read a report of this size and summarize it. He must be missing certain details. Well, the key details are in there, and apparently there is no obstruction. And there is no, no collusion. collusion. Yeah. And, okay, they didn't exonerate Trump, and they're holding on to that. How about just saying it said that there was no collusion in the report? They did a pretty fucking thorough investigation. Just admit you're wrong, or, or you just, might be wrong. Or celebrate and say, like, hey, isn't it good news that uh, our president didn't co uh, uh, collude with Russia? They think it's bad news <laughs> that the president didn't collude with Russia. It's true. How about saying, wow, <laughs> it's almost like if you think your girlfriend cheated on you. Yeah. And then you find out, like, fuck that bitch, she cheated. And then you find out she didn't. You're like, God damn, am I glad to be wrong. But I'm were, glad she didn't cheat on me. Because the problem is that you were looking at other girls going like, okay, once I find out that she cheated on me, I'm going to start dating that yeah. one. I'm going to fuck that one. Not date her, but I'll fuck that one. And I'll hang out with that one and just see what happens. And then you find out she didn't cheat on you. And then you're mad at her. Because now you can't break up with her because she actually didn't cheat on you. And then you go, well, it's only a summary of what you did. I'd like the full report. Yeah. But it really, it's like... You just be relieved that, that, that the Russians did not influence the election. I was watching CNN and MSNBC yeah. yesterday. How were they doing with uh, it? There was a lot of yeah buts. Of course there was. <laughs> I mean, of course. I love yeah buts. <laughs> it was embarrassing to watch. Like, just, like you said, just be happy. Be happy that your president didn't do a bad thing. Yeah, don't be fucking babies. You don't like the guy, but he he won. He won using the system. He won because of the Electoral College, the same way you thought he was going to lose. He well, won. Well, there's still a lot of investigations. And yeah, Southern but... New York is going to indict him and this and blah, blah, blah. It's not over. Yeah, it uh, is. Th worst. That part of it, he we, there was no clue. Okay, I didn't have an investment whether it was or not. I did, all right, well, they'll, they'll, let, they'll figure it out. Give us a fuck. Yeah, there wasn't. But... Be happy. Well, they're saying that Trump didn't collude 
but there isn't enough evidence to say without a doubt that Trump did collude uh, collude. in a court of law. So they're saying that, uh, that it's not saying he didn't collude. It's saying a court couldn't prove that he did. And you're like, well, what? That's the, that's how we, that's how we decide things though. They will hang on to the fact that it doesn't exonerate him. And that the attorney general, who was appointed by Trump, decided not to charge him with obstruction. So is this them saying, well, we didn't say he's innocent. It says he's not guilty. Yeah. And it's like, that's just that's how we figure things out. You're saying, oh, let's get the president to go to court. The court found him not guilty. Okay, then it's time to move on. You had a special prosecutor, and he interviewed everybody. I Everyone. Think he, I think Putin was interviewed. This guy talked to everybody. I mean, you got... Oh, you got it. Oh, he, he talked to Gorbachev. Manafort's going to jail, and the lawyer, what's his name? Uh, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen's going to jail, and poor Roger Stone is having a hell of a time with it. You, you, you left no stone unturned. No pun intended. Right. No he, collusion. There's no collusion on this one. 500 people. So <laughs> 500. Instead of being happy, the fucking press is disappointed they are. that they were wrong. They were hoping. And you're not supposed to be wrong as the press. It should be that you're never wrong because the press shouldn't be saying he colluded. The press should just be saying there is an investigation happening. Brian and Philly. No, I did not see this. And that way, by the way, they wouldn't be wrong because they would have just said there's an investigation happening. Uh, what's up, Brian? Hey, guys, Jimmy, you didn't see Rachel Maddow cried Friday night when the fucking report came out live on television. No, I did not see that. Pull it up. Okay, we'll look around. And, yeah, yeah uh, and then one of the articles says, don't, ex- don't expect a mea couple by the media. Never. Ne- they'll never do the story on what do we do to contribute, meaning them, what do we, the press, do to contribute to the mass murder problem by making these guys Mm-mm. antiheroes, and they, and they won't do this. Mm-mm. Okay, here's uh, Rachel Maddow. It says, barely holds back tears. Uh, okay, there's a little, little advertisement before it starts. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it really is amazing. And this goes back to what we were just talking about a moment ago, which is, if he's so bad, if he's so evil and he's grabbing pussies and he's racist and he's doing all this stuff, just because he didn't collude doesn't mean that he's not this evil man. Show... Show him, instead of latching on to this thing, that this report that you wanted so badly says he didn't do, show something else. If he's this bad, it shouldn't be this hard. But the press acting like they act about it, all they do is strengthen why people like him. Mm -hmm. Because he says, fuck the press, they're fake. And and all they do is continue to make his case. That's right. Fuck the press. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck Fuck the press. Fuck him is right. He's got it bad because he's orange. NWA lurk. Ah. Yeah. Except I've replaced brown with orange. Good for you. He's tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Smart so that's a little take. joke about the tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brought it right around. NWA lyric. Come on. Worked on very many levels. Very when you walk through the garden. <laughs> Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's uh let's see what uh Rachel Maddow had to say. It's breaking news. Is that a couple of hours ago, maybe even less than that? I was uh, standing knee-deep in a trout stream in Tennessee. <laughs> but now it's Mueller is that, time. Uh, is that, no, it's Mueller time. Standing knee-deep in a trout stream? Is that a joke about Miller time, the beer? Oh, Mueller now time. Now it's Mueller time? No. Yeah. I thought knee-deep in a trout stream was innuendo. But she, <laughs> yeah, I think she was actually doing that. Oh, okay. Because I was like, that reminds me of college, huh, guys? Huh? No. Is it, do you believe it? No, you, more, for you it would have been more like face down, face deep in a worm bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Stop eating the bait, Sam. <laughs> and so I'm in a studio in the great state of Tennessee. Uh, the trout are basically just as safe as they were when I was flailing away at them ineffectually <laughs> this afternoon. Boo. Um, but now it is, listen, oh, it's, poor Rachel. this is history. There's, this, is, this is a reason to stop fishing and go to work. Um, our, our, our job tonight um, as a country, sort of, or at least what everybody in the country is going to be doing tonight, is, is trying to figure out what it means that the report of special counsel Robert Mueller has finally been submitted. We've heard okay, it Okay, so said, this is before the results yes, were Yes, of out. course, when she still has her fucking hopes set up high. That's right. That the president colluded with oh Russia. Oh my God, Twitter on Friday? It was just a, a, a liberal dream. It was all coming true. It was. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> it was what? My favorite going to be the best. 
Our friend Corey Graves sent out a tweet that said, I just read the uh, Mueller report, and here's what I found out. And it was a meme from uh, Billy Madison that said, Miss Lippy's car is green. <laughs> Billy likes soda. <laughs> and he ended up being more right than anybody. Because yeah. they really were. It was like, across social media, the president is getting locked up by Monday. This was it. Yep. Everyone was so excited. And you could see Rachel sitting there going like, man, if I thought trout fishing was fun, and this is not a double entendre, this is actually fishing for trout. If I thought trout fishing was fun, oh boy, wait till I get the results of this report. They were so thrilled because they thought they were going to nail him. And then Trump was like, there's no collusion. And he, was, he ended up being correct. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so many times that it was imminent, that it was done. Maybe it was already done and we didn't know about it. Finally, it's happened. Um, in terms of what that means and what Mueller found, we know only the smallest little bits. This is the start of something, apparently, not the end of something. I mean, the logistics of today, at least, we know a little bit about. At 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the staff of the House Judiciary Committee got a call from the Justice Department that somebody would be bringing a letter from the Attorney General. I'm sure they all immediately guessed what that letter was. Um, a Justice Department staffer... This was back before uh, our innocence was lost. Yep. This was back when it was all still fun. Before when we, we, were, found- when we were still hoping <laughs> that the President and the Russians colluded. We were still hoping <laughs> that there was an explanation for why we lost. Right. We were still hoping that we could blame it on the Russians. We were still hoping that we were going to get our way. Sorry. You know, how are they not happy that the president didn't collude with Russia? I don't have a horse in this race, and I certainly am not saying that this is the way I'll vote. However, as I watch this, right, and I'm watching the coverage, and I'm watching uh, Chuck Schumer lose his fucking mind and go, you know, hey, wait, 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 we didn't, it's just a summary, like, let's wait, let's see. And Nancy Pelosi is losing her mind, and everybody's, you know... I'm sitting there and everybody, even though it's been announced, there's no collusion. And there just isn't. Like, can we, there just wasn't collusion. Like, I know we thought there was and it would be really fun if there was, but there wasn't. I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm going, oh my God. Not only, remember when Trump first got elected? I think both of us thought he wouldn't make the full term. Just for, something would happen and he wouldn't make the full term. I don't know if I thought that or if I said he's going to do eight years. I don't know if you said that from the beginning. Maybe I didn't. You definitely said that he was going to make it. I definitely said he wasn't going to make it. Roger Stone didn't think yeah, he was going to make it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I think... Because so much shit happened in, like, the first three months. Right. And I was like, there's no way... That- but I figured he'd, he'd drop out or something. Like, I figured yeah, yeah, he'd resign. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I thought he'd just get sick of it. Yes. But I'm sitting there, and I didn't... I don't think any of us factored in the fact that the people who don't like Trump, the force fighting against him, would self-destruct and go just as crazy as him, if not crazier. The media has lost just as much, if not more, credibility in the last couple of years than the office of president, for sure. They've lost a lot of it because there's a bunch of them doing the same thing. He's just one guy. Right. They they are, there's, there's a shitload of them, and they wanted it to be true so bad. And I'm watching this, and I'm going, it's official. I already knew, of course, he was going to make this term, and that it was likely that he would get a second one. I'm watching this and watching them cling on to this. They got the results. They're just not accepting the results. And I'm going, this is, this is why we're going to have another four years of Trump. Like, he's definitely going to do eight years total. He's definitely winning in 2020. Right? Yeah. Yeah, he is. I mean, I'm looking and I'm going, they're all nuts. They're all crazy in the way they're trying to fight this guy. He has gotten them all worked up so much. They're completely out of their comfort zone. They have no idea what they're doing. And there's not one person that can beat him at this. What else did she say? He's getting another four years. I want to see her get, I want to see her fucking see the the moment because she's so giddy right now. She's so giddy. Because it's before. Yeah. It's when it was still magic. Yeah. She ended her vacation early because she was so excited. She wanted to be the one to report it. So they're like, we could have the fill-in report it. No, 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 I'll do it. Because they don't do best of. They have fill-in hosts. Right. It's news. That's right. There's so no the repeats. fill-ins could have done it. She's like, no. She said it's history. Yeah, it's history. You know why she said it's history? Because she thought our president's about to get fucked. Right. She didn't know the results. But she said it's history because she was so sure that we're about to announce that there's Russian collusion. Yeah. Because it's not history that there's no Russian collusion. You know why that's not history? Because it hasn't happened to our knowledge. 
Every president has had no Russian right. collusion. This is one of many. <laughs> right. Trump is one of many who has had no Russian collusion. All the presidents so far have not colluded with Russia. Right. Right. It's the only reason it's history is because the media went into such a tizzy. It's hist It's media history. Yeah. But this president has not separated himself uh, in terms of collusion. It is history. Never have we in the press looked so fucking stupid <laughs> as we do right now. Never has a media collectively looked like <laughs> such panicky, biased assholes as we look right now. That's right. That's right. They are colluding with each other. Yep. All right. Let's hear what Rachel said. Messenger of some kind. All we know is that she was wearing a North Face jacket. She's uh, excited. She brought, yeah, in she fact, <laughs> two letters to the committee in two separate manila envelopes. That was just before five o'clock Eastern time. Our assumption is that the, there were two envelopes and two separate letters because that was one letter for the Democratic chairman of the committee and one for the Republican ranking member of the committee. Um, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Democratic Congressman Jerry Nadler, was at his New York office. He was not in D.C., so the committee staff She's quickly made all the a details digital out there. copy. Dude, nobody and, runs and, something into the ground like Rachel Maddow. Especially when it's something to celebrate. Holy shit. We, she could stretch it out. Oh, yeah. She wants people to realize this is a big deal. This is a big fucking deal, is what she's saying. She's the worst. We're about, to, we're about to have some collusion on display. Oh, yeah. Let's party. Yeah. Friday it comes out. Collusion. We're about to get our collusion announcement. Saturday, everybody's waiting with bated breath. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I can't wait. Sunday afternoon rolls around. This guy, Mr. Summary Man, he's like, here's your summary. Where's the collusion part? It's right there where it says none. None. <laughs> yeah, she's just stalling now until she gets it. Well, she's she's a not, talker. But she's not, not getting it. She knows that they're not getting it. Yeah, she's not getting it for two days. Yeah, he had to read the whole report. Mr. Summary Man had to spend the next two days reading the report. This was Friday when they just announced that it had been turned in. Oh, yeah. Don't All know. this is announcing is that the guy, the Summary Man is getting it. Yeah. Okay. So, Finished. So the letters that the Democrats and the Republicans are getting are just that the report is done. Mm. And we're giving it to Mr. Summary Man. I mean, Man. there's no news here. Okay. Like, that's the news. Good, that the letter's been delivered. Yeah, but she can... She could spend hours. Then why are they saying that she gets so upset in this? She, no, she, I think she's on well, the verge watch, of tears yeah. because she's so excited. Oh, I misread that. Okay, yeah, I hope yeah. so. I think so. And got the letter to him that way. We know those details thanks to a Judiciary Committee spokesperson laying out that process. We know that is how the House Judiciary Committee huh. was notified this evening that Special Counsel Robert Mueller had completed his investigation. We are assuming that a similar process, or at least a, a, a process with the same effect, also unfolded at the Senate Judiciary Committee around the same time today, but we don't have the same. I kind detest of her delivery. Process. It's the worst. I'm just very, very fucking smug. This is a big deal. Very she's smug. saying this is a big deal because we all have moral superiority to that bastard in the White House. Unfortunately, that was when we were operating under the assumption that we knew the results of the of the thing, and there was going to be collusion. Yeah. Oh, so she hadn't learned yet that there was she didn't oh, know there was okay, no. Okay. She's still happy. This is that's what I'm saying. So have we seen her since? This is like September 10th, 2001, where everybody's like, nothing bad could ever happen. No. This is Rachel Maddow's attitude. My on car Friday. got towed September 10th from I, New York. I was with a girl back to my house, and I wound up fucking her that night. September 10th was a half good, half bad night for me. And a terrible night for her because she had to fuck me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. 9 11 happened, and she was like, You should have seen last night. Yeah. <laughs> that little tower fell. <laughs> <laughs> Never stood up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to. Uh, oh, uh, I guess we could. Yeah, let's, let's wrap, wrap this up. I thought that, yeah. So we know the logistics of how we got the notification that it ended, and obviously, right now we have mostly just a ton of questions as to what Mueller's report says, sure, how questions. complete it is, who gets to see it, who gets to decide who gets to see it, and when. But after two years of almost entirely just questions about what Mueller is doing, I mean, some answers will start to emerge. Not the right ones, no. though. Yeah, that was a waste. We should... yeah, that was a waste. I did, yeah, I, well, I, I did like how she excited she was. I thought, she I thought this was after she found out. No, no, no she no, hasn't no. said anything since it came out. Okay. No, I, she she, just, she decided not to jump on the air for a special on Sunday when the news came out. Yeah. No. <laughs> when she, history was she, happened. Was she fishing again? Yeah, she wasn't part of their panel. No, yeah, she well, went, why not come back on? We have, once the history has happened. She was like, bro, I'm in a trout stream right now. I'm not coming out. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? No collusion? I can't hear you. Sorry. Bad reception. In a trout stream. go. Sorry. My phone was in my boot. Can't hear you. Samantha in Buffalo. What's going on, Samantha? Hi. Good morning, boys. Good morning. 
So I'm sitting in my parking lot dreading going into work because <laughs> after something like this happens in an office, it's like an all out free for all of Trump bashing and people baiting you into saying, like, can you believe that this didn't happen? And if you don't take the liberal side, you're like shunned in your office. And I'm not even conservative. I just don't want to talk about it. Yeah, you so know, all day long, people feel free to say shit like unhappiness that the president isn't colluding with Russia. I don't, I don't all that I'm going to have to deal with. I don't like that. We can't. That, thank you very much, because you're right, Samantha. I, it's crazy that you have to take one side or the other. You can't just sit there and enjoy that everybody in the press and half the political spectrum yeah. is is was wrong like yeah. that, isn't that funny or, and that, that's the fact that they can't admit they were wrong that's funny don't try to find a silver lining just take the dick <laughs> right You're take wrong. the dick just take it fuck yeah trying to it's, it's the whole trying to save face when for two years we have been proudly and and loudly pushing this we put all our chips behind the collusion What's that? thing all the laughter no all the all the all the money we put into the game uh, the the, the uh, uh, the collusion thing. And unfortunately, it would appear that there's no collusion. Let's take a piss. I got yeah. a piss. We're going to take a piss. Jamie Jost is here. Jamie Jost, of course, from Hate Breed will be uh, joining us. Well, so who do you think? We've, we Let's wrap it up. Jim Jeffries, Barbara Streisand, kicked in the face woman, or Trump critics? Um, Jeffries, because he's one person. Streisand, 78. She said she's sorry. It won't, she, you know, she just said something stupid. That will pass. And I don't think there's any audio of it. Uh, the Trump critic, there's a bunch of them, and they can all talk to each other and not feel like, and still feel like something bad's about to happen to him. So they can always take comfort in that. Mm -hmm. And the press will all take the exact same angle. So for them, there isn't just one villain. But with Jim, he's got it the worst because there's audio. Um, and, and people are seeing him as the one villain. I'm going to stick with you on this because I think, uh, Barbara Streisand can still be out of touch and think that she's apologized yeah. and everything's fine. Jim's having the toughest weekend. I think that the, yeah, the, the Trump critics can live in their state of delusion and That's act right. like this isn't happening. The woman that got kicked in the face, apparently she's homeless. So even though she got kicked in the face, she's still homeless, which is even worse than getting kicked in the face. Yeah. And they said she was treated and released. So yeah, I would think that Jim Jeffries had this week's worst weekend in the world well we just put a poll up on twitter yeah and we can see what the results are all right well let's do it after the break well we already posted it oh no i think we posted it yeah. and then we'll check the results after the break you fucking asshole but not everyone's gonna vote during the break well we could check the results after the break and then at the end of the show and maybe revisit tomorrow i like that because it's open for 24 hours <laughs> so i, I think you. it's important to open a poll for 24 hours well, that's uh, how long let's go to break it. let's go to break we'll be right back oh by the way cool. Well, we're getting Jamie, I hope, because uh, yes. I just passed Rob in the hall. I said, how much time is left? He goes, four minutes, and I come back in, it's two seconds. Yeah. Rob doesn't know time. No, he Rob, doesn't. Rob is too busy with his family. Rob and his family partied all night last night oh, over this yeah. Mueller report stuff. Oh, they did. They had a big Mueller party. Actually, we were playing uh, PUBG Mobile. Jamie Jost, I hope, He's is going coming to get him. In. Rob oh, okay. went to go get him. That's where you saw Rob. Okay, make sure Rob knows that we don't have four minutes. We're yeah. on the air now. Um, we were playing PUBG Mobile on our phones last night, even though we were in different houses. Me, Rob, Travis, and Reed, we were on a team. Except Rob couldn't play the second game with us <laughs> because he had to look for his wife's earring. <laughs> That's exactly what you should. He said, sorry, react. guys, can't play the second game. I got to look for my wife's earring. Rob, you said we had four <laughs> minutes. We have three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Jamie oh. Jost is here. What's up, brother? How you doing? Of course, front man of Hate Breed, who are beginning their 25th anniversary tour. Tickets and VIP packages are available now at HateBreed.com. Oh, thank you. They're going to Philly, Massachusetts, New York, Toronto, Indiana, Detroit, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, all over the place, man. Do you like touring? I do. Yeah. I, this is the first tour in a long time I think I've been extra excited about just because I had a break mm -hmm. since December and we get to play with pretty much all the bands that uh, influenced us growing up and we get to take them out on the tour with obituaries on the first leg with uh, Chrome Ags and Terror who Frank, our guitar player, used to be in 
a terror before he joined hate breed and then uh and then a band called fit for an autopsy who are guys we knew from other bands and then the second leg we have mad ball agnostic front prong obituaries on that leg again as well so it's it's going to be amazing and it's the first time we're doing theaters in a, in on our own That's like awesome. in, in a while so it's nice to for the 25th anniversary to step it up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. do cool. you uh you are you married basically yes okay so you have a long-term girlfriend whatever but yeah yeah so she's when, the best shout out to she we had a great day yesterday we had a great weekend actually when you, <laughs> she's you know, listening i had oh, yeah. <laughs> smart good answer well we had a wonderful time i went and saw our family couldn't have been happier <laughs> i had a wonderful domestic weekend myself did you sometimes those domestic weekends i really enjoyed it we got a swing set put in the backyard on sunday morning we went to like a, a birthday party with a bunch of two-year-olds running around <laughs> I, I, I i enjoyed myself but not it sounds See, like we, a horrible weekend. We were looking at houses because we're thinking about moving. So we went to a bunch of open houses. That's great and stuff. I'm like, I never do stuff like this. So it's it's like really cool for yeah. me because I, I was, I'm calling for repairs and stuff. Dude, I thought the two year old birthday party was going to be misery. You're right. Two year olds, <laughs> they know how to do it. I wish that normal people had birthday parties like this. It starts at 10:30 in the morning. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it's an hour and a half party. <laughs> You let the kids run around and wear themselves out, and then you're out the door at noon. There's an end time. What time does it start? 10.30. Oh, wow. That's you're, early. You're done by noon. Yeah. The kids are worn out. You bring the kid home. He takes a nap for three hours right away. It's like you didn't have to do any work in the morning. What type of activities do they have? It's like you They're just- a comedian? Bounce house. <laughs> what? No, there's no oh. There's no comedian. What? You're trying to get booked for- <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's a gig. <laughs> no, there's no comedian. What do they have? They have- Yeah, they have- there. You could be a like, bounce house. How about house those wiggles? Or, yeah. <laughs> there's like yeah. <laughs> there's like a ball pit, you know. There's slides, balance beams that are two inches oh, off just the ground. A bunch of dumb entertainment. One yeah, time, it's not for the p. It's for the two year olds. Oh. One time we, did, I think my daughter was two or three. We did one of those parties where you can have the animal trainer come with a bunch of different little animals and whip the elephant in front of the children. <laughs> <laughs> you tie up a baby elephant and watch him beat it with a hook. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see which kids like can't handle it at all because there's a couple that were just like trying to like squeeze one of the bunnies. And, <laughs> yeah, like it was not a good idea. Yeah, you got to watch that kid. That man. A turn <laughs> the kid was like trying, trying to like pull it apart. Sure. Like watch him, watch him. Keep an yeah, eye on him. Kids mechanically inclined. Yeah. It was to pull the little hand off and put it back yeah. on. <laughs> but the reason I ask about your situation is after you go on tour and you're gone for you know whatever length of time you're gone for, do you end up getting stuck? Like if you want to uh, do something and have fun, w- would your girlfriend go? No, you have to help me look for my earring. <laughs> Like would that be? Oh a- yeah, yeah. We had a whole day where it was just about finding these blue leggings, and I was like, you know, I thought my daughter might have took the blue leggings. She thought maybe I took them. I'm like, why would I be wearing blue leggings? <laughs> How but old yeah. your daughter? Twenty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I'm like, you go from playing to fifty thousand people one day, and then yeah. you get off the plane, and the next day you're looking for blue leggings. Because I'm worried about our guy, handsome Rob, and I'm glad that you're here, Jamie, because I feel like you would have uh, some wisdom for this. Because Jim, you have a certain perspective because you're a single man. Yeah. But Jamie understands the domestic life and also the kind of rock and roll lifestyle. A rock star. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So. You know, we're we're playing PUBG Mobile. We're on our phones. Where it was, you know, all the guys from the show. And even though we weren't, we texted. We were on a group text. No one asked me to play. <laughs> that was by design. I would love to play PUBG Mobile. You're, what not, even is on, it? you're not even on the group text, dude. I know. <laughs> it's a, there's a different group text with you on it. I'm so happy I'm not on that. Front of my phone to be vibrating. Who is it? This fucking video game shit. <laughs> we literally, Travis and I, had a chain that we were just we just kept sending Stone Cold gifts. To make fun of Rob, you would have, it would have driven you crazy. Yeah, it was like five texts in a row of Stone Cold doing different things to make fun of Rob. Troy, we should have had you on it actually. Now that in hindsight, but PUBG is like this uh, battle royale type game where uh, all the it's a you're playing with a uh, sixty different people in this version that we play, and you're on a team of four, and you have to fight each other and zombies, and you have guns, so you just run around killing each other. But the four of us are on a team together, and. Uh, we were all playing it was us and the intern Reed was playing with us too and we fucked up the first game we all died early so we were like okay let's play one more game and Rob just went radio silent he wasn't there anymore so we were like what happened and then we found out that he had to leave he couldn't play with the boys anymore (laughs) 
because his wife, his new wife of six months, I'm a little worried yeah. about Rob because he's only been married for like six months and his wife made him uh, help her look for her earring. Yeah. Why didn't you tell her to find it? It's her earring. She lost it. Why that you man the, up? That was what the fuck's question wrong with you? Travis and I both well, asked. I, like if, if, I, if I was dating someone and she like lost her Cialis and asked me to help. <laughs> <laughs> she just asked for my help. And I was, uh, I was away this weekend. Um, so, yeah. I just Where were you? Atlantic City. Oh, okay. Yeah. With the boys? With the boys. See, that's why. He had his boys weekend, yeah. so he couldn't come home and say, but it's a work thing, though. We're building uh, office camaraderie. Yeah, nope. Did you fuck anyone down there? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah, you you, you would have some... tried to, Jim? Oh, yeah. 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 I think I got a little pussy in ACM. I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, that's, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to try, that's where you go, right? Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> that's right. None? No, none. Not even like oral or anything? Nope. Oh, man. No. That's a bummer. Getting it blown? No. Why? I, 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 because I'm in a committed relationship uh, with you my wife. You didn't hook up at all? No. Make no, out? Nope. What'd you do? Nope. Uh, gambled. Okay. Gambled NCAA ch uh, March Madness stuff. Where'd you uh, stay? We stayed Harrah's one night and then the Hard Rock. Oh, okay. Did Share just, rooms? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Did oh, you just bet on the suite. games at home? Yeah, you can, but all my friends are degenerates and they wanted to like go actually check out the sports booking places and everything uh -huh. like that. And uh, okay. It was fun. It was a good time. But can, I, can I ask you a question about the Hard Rock? Yeah. Do you remember what they were playing in there? Uh, music wise, yeah. Uh, was it hip hop and country? No, it was more like alternative rock. Okay. Does that bother you when like the Hard Rock Cafe is not playing hard rock? <laughs> well, no. I, I went on Twitter this morning and I saw D. Snyder was like, "Fuck the hard rock." They, they're only playing, <laughs> they're only playing hip hop, and uh, and the hard rock responded. I guess I didn't really. I just just uh, passed by it real quick, but it it said they said. I guess they kind of said like rappers and country stars are also like rock stars. Well, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame set that precedent, right? Yeah, I guess so. But then there was other people like chiming in, like the like um, Tracy Guns from LA Guns and other rockers were like chiming in, like that. You started this brand based on hard rock because it was a different lane. It was something different. Yeah. And now because it's not as popular, you're needing to. Yeah, but it's it, a business, once right? Once it becomes a casino, it's kind of hard. They, they just got to go and bring. They probably just want to bring all gamblers in, and they don't want them listening to music music that they're not going to like so they figure they mix it up they get black guys latin guys country fans yeah. they want everybody in there fucking gambling they, i mean they basically they're trying to fuck you out of your kids college tuition <laughs> so whatever <laughs> they have to play to keep you in there d snyder wrote rather than support the great new rock and roll that's out there hard rock has caved under the pressure and caters to the flavor of the week can't wait to hear the new ariana grande next time i'm there <laughs> <laughs> well, i was in there in, in the vegas one not too long ago and it, i thought it was a good playlist like they played beast Beastie Boys and Cypress Hill and, and Rage Against the Machine. And I, I mean, that's you could say that that's hip hop or that has rap influence or whatever. But it's still rock. Yeah. yeah. It's, and they're rock stars, mm -hmm. right? Like if you saw. Cypress someone, Hill literally has a song called Rockstar. Yeah. yeah. And, and and then as far as like the, the pop punk or the punky stuff, like you hear, you'll hear Offspring and Blink 182. Technically still rock stars, right? Punk rock. But they they do stick to, I guess more popular music at the other locations. You're saying the Yin Yang Twins, not as much. <laughs> yeah, not, I, not so much. Or, or like, yeah, if you go in and it's, you know, someone new and popular like Travis Scott or something, you might be like, well, yeah, why are they, why do they need sure. to play this? Although I think Travis Scott would uh, define himself as a rock star if you asked him. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Motley Crue have like beef with him or something because he took their stage show out on tour or something? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> when he took their stage show, did he do the same one? Yeah, I mean, like, like took, the fireworks. I'm the, sure the company probably rents it to everybody. I, I think Motley Crue also had beef with Kiss taking out a similar stage production, which, uh -huh. well, yeah, here we go. So, what did oh, he Travis ripped, Scott ripped <laughs> off Motley Crue's roller coaster stunts? Uh, it says, uh, uh, according to TMZ's, uh, according to TMZ, Travis Scott's lawyer has said Tommy didn't invent the concept of a roller coaster on stage, and there's no legal bias for his accusatory outburst. The actual creator and owner of the system has granted Travis all rights to use that equipment to uh, complement his original stage design. So he's saying that I, I guess the Motley Crue yeah. was the first band to really popularize having a roller coaster on stage. Okay. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> and Travis Scott was just like, I would like to do that. What would they do? Would Tommy Lee be? Oh, uh, yeah, he'd be playing in it. 
Yeah, that's when back in the eighties, like Tommy Lee used <laughs> so to do his drum solo rapping in it upside oh, down. Fuck that, I would never do that. <laughs> I think that's awesome. It is, but I'd be very yeah, nervous. Yeah, it goes completely upside down, strapped in. I would say every band should just do their concerts upside down. I uh, think it's well, quite a spectacle. I don't, I don't know this guy's music uh, per se, but. I think that it's cool that he's upping his production because yeah. I know, like, just from playing a lot of these big festivals, some in the U.S., but mostly in Europe, that you can get to that headliner status if you're going to invest some of your guarantee into your own production. So if you're bringing in your own, like, big production pyro we've done and CO2 jets and kabuki backdrops and stuff, if you're bringing that in, a promoter, a festival promoter is like, great, that's, you know, that's less we have to spend on pr production. We'll pay you more to, for you. You to handle it and your crew to Wait, set it up. Would Tommy go upside down or would he yeah, just yeah. go? Oh, he no, would, Tommy yeah. would go upside okay. down. Maybe yeah. not on that one. I didn't see him going upside down on that one, but he definitely would. Oh, okay. He would yeah. He would be in like a, a clear box. There you go. Oh, yeah, he's upside down. Look. But see, Parkway like, Drive does this too. They Parkway Drive from Australia here who are blowing up all over the world, a, a metal band. They do that too and Tommy didn't like pick a fight with them. Right. How does he you strap know? himself in? Just to the chair? Or is there like no, a he just holds on tight. Oh, good. His little feet are locked in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he got stuck up there. Did you see that? Ever see that? Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. great. No. Yeah. yeah they got <laughs> nothing, nothing will make this stunt look dumber. Like if this stunt goes perfectly, it's awesome. If you get stuck up there, immediately, well, why the fuck are you drumming upside down anyway? This is stupid. Right. And I think Joey from Slipknot did it at one point too and I don't think Tommy had beef with him then. Sounds racially motivated. <laughs> This is New Year's Eve 2015. Right. He gets stuck. I think this is like one of their like last shows on the farewell tour. So you know Vince made it happen. He's like, hey, he, he tipped the guy out. Just threw it through a stick. He's in like, the keep spokes. him up there a little extra. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. This goes over the audience? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's See, drumming like, over the audience. They basically have roller coaster tracks that go up the ceiling of the arena. And go over the entire audience. He's and not allows, upside down there, though. But there's a, there's a spinning thing on it that allows you to go upside down. Yeah. There's an axle. There are axles on either side of this platform. How much that must cost? And the insurance. Oh, my God. I mean, it's to probably... To get someone to insure that? <laughs> it's probably in the thousands. <laughs> I would say even more. Whoa! What Tens happens if you drop thousands. a drumstick? That's what, well, you know what? They throw them out at people. Probably got another one in your pocket. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I mean, you don't see it coming. It comes down the uh, Right in your eye? Yeah. yeah, or down your throat? No, it's Tommy It's like something Lee, out of Final Destination. Tommy oh, Lee throws a drumstick, and it's like Lord of the Flies. I think people Ozzy should be... attacking each other for it. Ozzy should be pissed at Motley Crue. Yeah, they're doing our music. Our? <laughs> Who the fuck is our? Did you just say our music? No, Ozzy would be saying they're oh. doing our music. Oh, I thought you were being Jim and saying no. taking possession no, of no, Ozzy's no. tunes. No, I was being Ozzy. Oh, okay. But if oh, you there were, he goes spinning. Yes, he spins. If you were the guy that invented this technology or helped build this or whatever, your company helped build this, you wouldn't want it sitting in a storage room no. somewhere right. in L.A. You Send can it out with Travis Scott and get you know rent it to him. Molly Crew did their farewell tour. What are you going to do? Just save it in case they come out of retirement again? Yeah. You can't so do it. You he's upside down. Yes, and, and the beef with Kiss, I think it was over like those those things that like the the electric uh, company goes up and fixes the wires. Where it was like you right. you get in that and then you get up there and play. It's basically a window washer thing, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and and I I guess Nikki was like, yeah, Gene took this idea from us or whatever. But they've always had beef. I don't think they've ever gone along. And Kiss and Motley Crue. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you saw the dirt, but. In I the did. dirt, I think one of them, maybe it's Mick Mars, they go, yeah, Kiss sucks. Did All you, these guys yeah. are climbing they even, up. They even squeezed it they in got the movie. A dig. They got that dig in. Yeah, so they gotta, they have to have stagehands climb up the uh, roller coaster things so they can Holy free shit, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. How are this they freeing it. him? What are they doing? Well, they probably just got to get the mechanics going. So a buddy of mine does this uh, rigging. He's done it for a bunch of events. And those guys get paid. I'm sure. They, Are you kidding that's, me? That's a good gig. If you're not afraid of heights. Dude, you can replace a yeah. drummer more easily than you can replace one of these guys that yeah. will climb up the rafters. <laughs> yeah, we Nobody <laughs> wants to do that gig. Oh, there they go. They're, they fixed it. Yes. <laughs> well, he's not still there. It's no, 2015. But he's like turning back upside down. They just went and, and loosened he's something. pissed. Well, yeah, because he looks like a fucking idiot. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, he still played. Well, yeah, but he looks like a tool. His roller coaster got stuck. <laughs> is there audio? Like, what's Vince yeah. doing during this part? Or is it during He's the like, drum solo? He's like, look how stupid Tommy looks. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not like Vince can, like, uh, you know, talk to the crowd during it. Dude, it's cool to have a roller coaster come off your stage, but not if it's a rickety old rundown roller coaster that doesn't work. He looks like a tool. Why are you turning upside down? You don't need to turn upside down. No. Like so what does it do? Though. Does it go there and then go all the way back? 
Tommy Lee is I actually so. like, a, or like, maybe it lands and they detach it, and then he has like a riser that that rolls. I back. would imagine it lands. They probably have a catwalk w- that everybody can walk out onto into the crowd. Tommy Lee is like actually a really good drummer, right? He's really, yeah, he's oh, great. Yeah, he's great. So you would think that he could just play standing upright, and everybody would still be impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Like tricks like this are generally for people that aren't that good and but they need to spice it up. He was doing that on the Girls 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 tour. So Right, he was in that box that spun around. Yeah, so I mean what do you get you gotta keep doing it. I guess so. I mean he's old. The fact that it's twenty fifteen and Motley Crue is still touring. That's pretty amazing. That's a feat in and of itself. And doing arenas. They're alive. Do you know what Motley Crue did? <laughs> I mean barely. Barely is right. Have you seen but Vince Neil lately? No. Oh boy. Look, he's not doing oh. Is he still right. stuck? He is. He's He's so asking the audience to show them his titties because he's well, you know stuck what? up on his roller coaster. I, I'll say this for Tommy Lee. He's fucking keeping it going. What else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? stuck on his drum roller coaster that doesn't need Sitting to be there. like an asshole. He is, Troy. <laughs> I mean, when they, you really break it down, he looks like a bit of an asshole. Yeah. And it's uh, ironic because right before this, he looked like the man. He was the man. Yeah. Do you when, know somebody is panicking right now? Fix it. Get yes. it fixed. You're fired. When the somebody roller probably coaster, got fired. When the roller coaster was moving, it was like, oh my God, that might be the coolest drummer in the world. And then the minute it was stuck, oh, what a dickhead. Look at this boob. <laughs> Look at this fool up there. Why is he up there? Oh, is that the whole thing suspended above the audience? I know it's above the audience, but I, I, I thought it was grounded in something. It's suspended? Yeah, it's on, It's on like, uh, wires or chains or something. Let's see. There it yeah, goes. It's a, yeah. There see they that? go. They got see it. That? They see got that? it moving. Okay. Because now what do you do? You go back to playing the drums, and everybody's like, "Oh, that's that guy who got stuck in the, ele- on, the on the roller coaster." Yeah, and then you better trouble check it for the next date. But I bet, I mean, you I got to think this was the last date of his tour. Oh, you know, it was New Year's Eve. Positive, yeah. I love that it's New Year's. I, w- I wish the countdown was happening as he was oh. stuck. Like, oh, we had a whole plan. <laughs> like, I wasn't supposed to be upside down <laughs> over road G. <laughs> the, I mean, they really went out with a bang, though. I mean, to up the production level like that yeah. for the last tour. I mean, they could have. But just don't, played with the the standard sort of rigs and 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 pocketed all that money. That's a good point. They did spend a lot on the stage. But don't get shitty. That there's not enough. Long. What's part two? How'd you get out of there? <laughs> How long was he stuck? Don't be shitty about rappers not being rock stars. And then when rappers start to add rock star shit to their stage stuff, be sh- still be shitty. But, like what can Travis Scott do that rock stars won't be shitty to him? Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? I know. Like, it's kind of shit. He can't get played at the Hard Rock. He can't have a roller coaster. He can't do anything. And But look at, like, Run DMC. They were accepted in the rock world. I mean, they I, don't were. Know, I don't know why it's less accepted now. I'll tell you why it's less accepted now, because Run DMC were accepted in the rock world when rock was at 10 and rap was at 4. Now that rap's at 10 and rock is at 2... Rock's like, fuck those guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, the kid that played Tommy Lee in the movie did a great job, um, Machine, Machine, Machine Gun, Gun Kelly. Kelly. And we've played with him before, and he's come to our shows and um, and hung out before. And, and he has, like, a full band. Like, we did a big festival in Austria with him, and he had a full band. Everybody was playing. He really, you know, he's not, like, one of these rappers that has all the bunch of tapes. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, he really performs. And so, like, he, I would say, yeah, play his music in the hard rock. He's a rock star. But aren't there, rock, aren't there rock bands that have tapes going, too? Oh, yeah. I guess I got to be careful about that, because I've gotten in trouble on other shows. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching footage of Kiss. I was watching 2019 footage of Kiss singing like whatever they were doing and I'm, I'm like Paul Stanley sounds fucking incredible no backing track I don't know that's what I'm trying I don't think so but like a guy like that who, who's been singing since 1973 get up he said dude he sounds amazing live and was Gene Simmons over there going like oh yeah he certainly was being Gene Simmons <laughs> just dressed up as the Kool-Aid man they were awesome <laughs> Gene's voice I gotta say is incredible is it yeah Gene's voice has never waned I don't think he's ever lost it and he, they are aren't they doing more <laughs> Songs. Why would you do this to Vince Neil? Oh God! Troy is looking up current pictures of Vince uh, Neil. Someone sent he packed me a, a few on it. He right. was the hottest. He was like chick sex god. Oh, he was a yeah. sex god. He just fucked everything. But it's hard not to. It's not hard not to eat well when you're Vince Neil. You go out there, everyone's buying you desserts. How do you not enjoy him? He went from being a sex god to being a food god. Yeah, yeah. He, Tommy and he, Nikki are holding it together. He just played. <laughs> uh, He's like burgers. Yeah. <laughs> he played a friend of mine saw oh, him his at belly uh, is so big. Oh, big. So Mo- Mohegan and uh, they posted like a video of him. He played with his solo band, yeah, and uh, for that. he they posted a video of him on their Facebook. And the first comment was Vince Meal. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's terrible. It's terrible. But uh, I would say Vince Neil is a, is is even. He looks worse in that photo than Fat Axel. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, they put a few on. Vince did. Unfortunately. It happens. Yeah, I mean, let him eat well. You know, he cares. As long as he sounds good. Axel sounds. <laughs> Axel, by the way, you know, who still looks like a million Incredible. Bucks? Rob Zombie looks like he has an age today. He's a oh, fucking yeah. vegan. He probably does yoga. He and does all yoga shit. all the goddamn time. Yeah. He still sounds good. He's still the fucking man. He's the man, and he he can do. He can quietly pack or sell out sheds every summer with just him and one other act. So mm -hmm. he'll do like him and Alice Cooper or him and Manson. I think yeah. they've done it multiple times. Yep. And it's it's huge. But going back to Kiss, um, oh. there there's a. There's a debate going on right now where, like, Sebastian Bach sides with Kiss, says they're not lip syncing. He sounds great. I think Jericho is also siding. Oh, is that actually a thing? Oh, it's a it's a major thing. Yeah, but Jericho is a huge Kiss fan. Is Sebastian Bach so, also yes, a huge he is. Kiss he fan? Is. Yes. Okay. So I didn't know that was even a thing. I just thought of it while I was watching. No, no, it, it's a major debate right now on the internet, at least. And Nikki Six is claiming that they're playing the tape, and other other people. But Nikki Six doesn't like Kiss, right? And so I we have think, biases going on here. Well, I think Eddie Trunk has come out. And 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 said they were playing the tape. Oh, and he is also anti Kiss. He is. He's pro Ace and pro Peter. Very anti Gene and Paul. Okay. okay. And okay. he's saying that the ones that are playing the tape are the non Ace and Peter Kiss. Yes. Those guys aren't doing with Tommy and Eric, of course. But I'm not saying that Kiss is doing this, but I heard this from a friend who was working front of house for a for a band where the singer had lost his voice, yes. but wanted to do like partial. I guess performance of the set sure and so they had a live like a live recording so it's doesn't sound like it's the not record. the studio right doesn't sound like a studio recording. and they put that into their Pro Tools rig and they ran that like in the big courses with the melodies and at some points during the set and they still got to do the show they didn't lose like a three hundred thousand dollar guarantee I'm not saying Kiss does this but I'm you not, can't really you couldn't really tell can we see I footage watched, of where they're saying it that I, Kiss did I've never I, I literally just thought how great I would saying rather Kiss a band that. do that than cancel the band. show I know. Oh, okay. Uh, I would rather a band do that, cancel the show, and I and I don't knock a band for doing that or and, and having that. If they think like, look, you got bronchitis or you have uh, some sort of issue, maybe you have a vocal cord tear towards the end of the tour. You don't want to blow out the rest of the dates, but you can get through. People certain... still want to see the band. Yeah, right. So, but I'm not saying they're doing that. But if they did, I wouldn't knock them. And they 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 use wigs, obviously, at this age, which is no. Fine. <laughs> I don't. Like, but I'm saying I don't like Pauls. I like the older ones they used to have. Like in the, in this, was he wearing a wig in the 70s? Well, during the Destroyer tour, so. Paul's hair was fucking <laughs> incredible. Not to sound like a homosexual, right. but he had beautiful hair. <laughs> he was when he was, they were they were doing like Cobo Hall and fucking and, and, and touring in 76, 77. Paul Stanley's hair is a sight to be seen. Well, Paul it was wears amazing. He, oh, he wears a merkin on his chest. So that people think that he still has chest hair, right? I no, think true. it's not. Mer it's not no, American. Paul wouldn't do that. Okay. I think Paul's moving from Reseda Park down to Baldwin Avenue by now. But if you if you catch him throwing down, but I understand. He's, <laughs> he's, he's uh, he. I think he's. I don't know. Get up. Maybe he's wearing extensions. Extensions are extended to once. Which I wouldn't knock him for he's doing. Putting that extensions either. in his wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like they tie it in. I don't no, know. you're right. Because I'm sure he's losing his hair from the bottom, not from the top. <laughs> <laughs> but and Gene's, he can't move like he quite like he used to. But considering he's almost seventy years old, they I still mean, move pretty fucking good. I, I can't hate on 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 what he's doing up there in terms of him being seventy. And in those boots. And I think Gene, we have to blame for the man bun. I think he was the creator. Yes, he was back in seventy four. Yeah. <laughs> dressed to kill that fucking homoerotic uh, cover for uh, Hotter Than Hell. Yeah. Yeah, Gene, was, he did that over in the fucking, uh, he got that, I think, from Tokyo. Because when they started doing their Tokyo tours, they'd have all these great photo shoots, and Gene's wearing a kimono, and he has a fucking <laughs> bun. And I'm like, what a fucking great idea. Is Gene, wearing, a is Gene wearing a wig now, too? Oh, yeah. Uh, is he? You wouldn't tell. No, yeah. No, no, I thought it... Hair has actually come back uh, over the years. It's actually grown back, which I didn't think was possible. It's not a good way. If you look at the first photo, Troy... Yep. He looks better there. You can see the, that looks like a hairline. Then the second photo right next to it, oh, very, very lucky. You got a lot oh, of that yeah. hair back. That's, oh, that's yeah. actually... Yeah, the wig looks pretty... He's, Paul's is, is decent. Mm-hmm. But, uh... I guess he fucks with the wig on then, Gene Simmons? Because it looked like in the sex tape... It's not know. a good wig. I don't know why he wears that. Like, he's, he's maybe, Gene. Maybe that's why in Gene's sex tape, he was barely even moving. Because he didn't want to knock Seagal. his wig off. Then who? Seagal. I haven't seen his. Does he wear a wig? I think Seagal's is all natural. 
<laughs> if, you, if you had to put them side by side, jeans is better than Seagal's. Hmm. Um, <laughs> but What's wrong with that? That's not bad. It's natural. <laughs> He's a stick on goatee. <laughs> is that a wig? <laughs> The, his, his facial hair, his facial God, hair I mean. color is about as convincing as Dennis Falcone's. Yeah, no, it's, on a, his little, head. it's a little dyed. <laughs> no, it's the Just for Men shampoo. Regardless of all this controversy, that's right. The tickets are like killing it, and they're doing shirts for fifty. This is the first time a rock band I think has ever done shirts for fifty bucks. You like my and kiss? Yeah, and they're killing. It. I'd go. I want to go see them one more time. I mean, again, me too. How much do you guys? How much does Hatebreed charge for shirts on tour? Um, probably this tour, probably twenty bucks, dude. I, I, I things are changing. I went. Remember when we went to see? I went with Troy to see Jay Z on his last tour, and I think the T-shirts. If I'm remembering this right, <laughs> I believe. Take a guess at the T-shirts. I would say eighty bucks. Ding yeah. ding ding! Really? I believe the T-shirts were eighty. And Troy, do you remember how much the hoodies were? I would say one fifty. One fifty. I think at least for Jay Z. Fifty. Yeah. And I looked at Troy and I was like, "Fuck!" And I went. Can I get a hoodie and a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. I want them both. Yes, Come on, yeah. you did? Yes, I did. Were yeah, they nice? I mean, I like. I, I can't wear them because I'm afraid I'm going to get something oh, on them now. Come on, you got to wear them. It's beige. Who cares? You're ordering... The, the thing was... was I got shirts. a St. Paul... I got... I went to Kanye's show and I got two t-shirts because the t-shirt actually had the concert date on the back and these t-shirts i mean but they're all gettable again like you can you're gonna be able to i know get but it's the again. it's the experience and also with the kanye stuff then buy two kanye is one of the first people that they actually make bootlegs of his tour merchandise and they sell it in stores like it's not even like you can see it's not actual but i mean literally the t-shirt was just it was a black t-shirt one color it just said St. Pablo on the front, <laughs> screen print, and on the back it said September whatever, Madison Square Garden, general admission. I wasn't even sitting general admission. And, and you I was still like, wanted it. I was like, let me get a black t-shirt, a white t-shirt, let me get one of those green hoodies. And it probably sent me back like 300 bucks or something. And you don't wear them. That's where Sometimes you're crazy. Wear you should wear them because the worst. If you get something on them, they're not worth that much. Like w the old ones from the 70s, you're not going to find most of these concert shirts that are worth, like legitimately worth lots. So just enjoy it. Yeah, I guess. So the Kanye stuff will be will be just enjoy And the it. line was so long. Weren't people missing the concerts so they can get Dude, the shirts? It was a store that happened to have a concert going. The <laughs> line was so I cut the line. People were so oh, pissed. <laughs> oh, uh, me and, and my buddy I'm from Joe. Serious satellite radio. This is it's okay, everybody. No, I was like my buddy Joe is like this Italian dude from the Bronx. And so he just is too busy not giving a fuck and he has this like look. It's a death look where where if he just looks at you, you're like, okay, I guess I guess it's fine. So he I, he was like, you want to you want to get the merch? I'm like, yeah, but the line is so long. He's like, no, watch. And he literally just snuck in right at the front. Two, we were third on line, and like I heard these like teenage girls behind me like mumbling to their mom. He wasn't standing there. I, I don't. He wasn't standing there. But nobody else said anything. So I was like, let me get... Because they're going to sell out of mediums. Yeah. I was like, let me get two T. That's why, again, I was like, now I really got to buy. How long was the line? I mean, it was over an hour long. Easy. Oh, and I bet you held it up, too, because you're looking at the tag. You're like, is this 50-50? <laughs> yeah. What is this? Making this is, sure. 80 bucks is not even 100% cotton? Dude, the garden was empty for the first... We sat there for an hour waiting for Kanye to go on. No opening act. And it was empty the entire time, not because nobody got there, but because everybody was at the merch booth. Everybody. Did he have a tour program? No. Okay, not that I saw. Because I, I was thinking about doing a program for this tour, uh -huh. and we got prices, and we, we started putting together a layout, and we at the at the final minute, we just said, you know what, it's probably not worth it. How much it. are they? How much is a tour program? To, 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 to make. To the, produce. A really nice one, you can... In small quantities, like I think we wanted to do it just for VIP, so I think we were going to do like six or seven hundred, but we were going to make it like a twenty-four page one. I want to say they were five bucks each. And oh, we that's were, not bad. No, w and WWE we, does them for big shows, and no, but it's like a big glossy like, and they charge I think twenty bucks okay per program because I, I but I, like if Kanye did it, dude, he would figure out some way to make it limited, or there'd be some kind of art on it. I guarantee you, if Kanye West did a program, it would be a hundred dollars. Yeah, he would have crushed it. I, I think too. And but I, I would have been like, I gotta get one of those programs too. <laughs> the, the, the old ones, if you ever see them online, the, some of the old ones are really cool. Like I have an old Anthrax one that's amazing, and you can see what cities they played, what you know, uh, what venues. A lot of the venues are no longer around. Motorhead did one that I have, which is the 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 program is credible. And I just did a I did a 
my other band, my, my Josta project, I did a tour with Anthrax um, and Killswitch, and they had a little one, maybe a 10-page one, but they all signed it, I think, for their VIPs, and I thought that was pretty cool, but I mean, I like... I love old tour programs. I love them, dude. The old old Ozzy one. My, my friend Chuck Palella in high school, <laughs> he, for six bucks, he sold me like the 81 or 82 Diary of a Mad... It was all wrinkled, but he had it, and so he sold it for deal. six bucks. Nice. The Diary of a Madman fucking uh, tour book. I'm going to go out now on eBay, yeah, you can get them in perfect condition. You can get a mint. You but, still have it? Uh, I, I, somewhere. Go back to it. I'll show you which one it was. It was Ozzy with his hand over his, uh, raised his hand. Damn it. Wait, wait, how come you don't want to show me? I, I do. Hang on. Troy, how come Troy, you don't want to show me? There's a little operator yeah, error happening. It was uh, that one at the top right. Oh. Top right. Troy got distracted by... Uh, and, and that's in exactly the condition mine. Yeah. Wrinkled. Those Fucked are up. so cool, too. With Aussies are especially cool because you can see what the, the solo band lineup was, w you know, what the, what the dates were, the routing was. I mean, all that stuff's interesting to me, but... Yeah, I was wondering if modern bands or, or rappers or country people do Jay -Z the Jay-Z didn't program. have one. Con I don't remember the last time I went to a concert and they were selling programs. I, I wonder I if guess Travis the Scott the is. pictures are everywhere now and no one cares anymore. I, I don't know what it is. Travis, I, and I guess if you're skewing to a younger demo, they're not used to having something physical like that. Like, you know, they don't read magazines. Maybe anymore. we could do like a digital program. Like you, you buy the app? <laughs> yeah, buy the, buy you the get a, app. Get a QWERTY and... code on the back of your <laughs> <laughs> tickets? Yeah, man, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Travis Scott did, because he's like, Travis Scott is crushing in his merchandise. Yeah. I like wonder, his merchandise, he's another one that people are really going to the, sh it's a store that there happens to be a concert at. Is he the one that has the inflatables? And I was yeah. like, oh, we gotta do that. At he's got a big inflatable Travis Scott head, but he's also, I mean, he's like, he's got to deal with Nike, he's putting out his own Jordans. Oh, wow. Like, it's it's insane what he's got going on. See, more bands... Like, look at that. That's the Travis Scott Jordan 1. I actually like that. It's going for $2,300 right now. I don't now. like what? it that much. So stupid. It's I mean, made the, in China for like four shit. bucks each. <laughs> I hope someone steps in liquid dog shit in that. Like, the type, the type that goes wow. all the way to the roots of the grass when it's a fucking nice, fresh... By the way... There's going to be another release in April, I should say. Totally to digress. Whatever, I hope this person is dead. Whoever got diarrhea on top of the toilet upstairs, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Flex of diarrhea on the seat. How do you shit? How does That's that fucking explosive. happen? Just because people work here doesn't mean they don't sometimes have diarrhea problems. You, how do you get on top of the seat? You're sitting on it. Splatter. It's a, maybe it's a hurt. <laughs> no, squat. your fucking ass is there. You can't, unless you're squatting like a fucking lady. That's probably what happened. They probably didn't want to put their cheeks because. Fucking asshole. Yeah, you're blasting. You don't want the Dude, water splashed. I had, splash I had flex of diarrhea on top of the toilet. Did you sit on it anyway? Right on it. Ew. <laughs> but you, when you go on tour, you play venues that have nice toilets, right? You never have to go to like one of these dingy clubs where it's just, you got to use the gen pop toilet. Yeah, no, I, yeah a few of the, some of the comedy clubs don't have green room toilets. I don't shit, I'll shit in a hotel. Okay. Yeah, so you, the, never, uh, you never get like nervous before the show and got to... <laughs> oh, many times. I, I, a lot of times have to fucking empty out right before the show. Just in a club, I can usually either go back in between shows or do it. You know, there's always a way to avoid it until... I was at the Punchline in San Francisco many, many years ago, and I was sick. And I was shitting um, like before and after my set. It was horrible. Because it was, it was the, the audience bathroom. But you made it. I made it. Yeah. yeah, I was in Indonesia and I ate something weird. And I was just shitting all day, just water, water, water. And then by the time the set time rolled around, there was still shit coming out. So we made like a box with a, with a trash bag in it just in case, like during the set, I had to run back there and drop it and just fucking piss water out of my ass. But luckily I didn't have to. I just pinched so hard for that entire Indonesian festival and then got back to the hotel and it took me weeks when I got home to but that's one of my fears like that's why this tour coming up our 25th anniversary tour it's great because every theater is nice or if it's a big club yeah like stage AE in Pittsburgh where everybody can have their own dressing room and have a nice nice toilet yeah nice like, toilet experience I remember you know in the early days 95 96 like that was a big deal like if you had a dressing room with your own toilet mm -hmm. and uh have and, you had to <laughs> shit in some gross toilets oh yeah hundreds I mean that <laughs> in the early days of touring in a van and playing, even that was a step up. We were excited about that because we went from playing like American Legion halls and VFW halls and people's yards and people's basements. So when you actually get into the dump where people, you know, a, a big band that we looked up to would go, oh, that place is a dump. And we'd be like, Jesus, that's an upgrade for us. It's a dump for this band. Yeah. But. You know, even now I don't I don't call any places a dump. Good I, for you. I, we're we're <laughs> we're we're happy that we got to play there. But yeah, we've 
I mean, CB's toilet was notorious for being just fucking despicable. Yeah, I, I, I would like imagine. To, I wonder if, if anyone in Kiss, if any of those guys have had, I'm sure they've had to shit while they had half a costume on. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the early days. With those giant boots. You imagine having to shit in seven inch heels and <laughs> sit down and you're squatting. That's gotta be a fucking horror show. <laughs> yeah, they have to take it off like a onesie. They're just nude with giant boots on in the bathroom. Yeah, big demon boots under the stall. You're like, oh, Gene is shitting. I wonder, Gene, are you shitting in there? Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> I wonder if any of the older bands like now just, just wear a diaper on stage say fuck it yeah you know like i saw bob seeger was going out and I'm, and he looks great sounds great not that bob would have to wear a diaper but someone in that age range what's he 70 yeah right well i, I mean fergie pisses all over herself if she has Dutch. to on stage I why not it's so hot just go for it i love when a girl pisses her pants is there anything better <laughs> yeah lots of things <laughs> <laughs> i 100 things just came to mind wow you're you, real wow fergie no that's just butt sweat no she admitted it was piss oh really that's not butt sweat it's in the front or down her thigh <laughs> yeah butts are in the back <laughs> <laughs> so hot. She's just tinkling. She admitted to peeing herself yeah. on stage. That's yeah, great. She's badass. She's a rock star now. She right? is. That's great. I knew a guy in a hardcore band that would crowd surf like out into the audience to have people sing along with him, and he would pee while he was doing that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. He That's doesn't awesome. want me. To, he doesn't want me to say who he is, but I've told that story on my. Wouldn't podcast. they see it all over his pants? <laughs> no, he's wearing, he would wear black pants. One time we were on tour with him. That's great. And he, oh, <laughs> we, oh. Their their intro was running, and he's he's by the amps, and they're getting ready to walk out on stage, and he looks at me, and he he starts down in this like <laughs> bottle of water, and he's like, "Wait for it, bro. Wait for it." I'm like, no. <laughs> That's awesome. The singer from Dillinger, he was sick, uh -huh. and he climbed up on the PA stack, yeah. and he had the diarrhea shits. No. He just shit all over the PA. You can't yes. do that. Yeah, yeah that's Did true. Did he mean to, or just came out? No, it just, he had to get rid of it. And he's Sometimes, like, fuck it, let's make a spectacle of it. Yeah, if I have this, why waste it? Exactly. Yeah, and you yeah. know what? Surprisingly enough, I think it, like, upped his cred, because all of a sudden, it was very, he he was always a kind of, that band has kind of always been polarizing, yeah. right? It's for some people just think it's just noise or whatever, but they rip, yeah. and they're a great band. But that kind of made them like the G.G. Allen of the yeah. noise core world, right? Where it's like people are like, wow, that's fucking badass. And and well, other he was doing like, crazy shit, too. I mean, there's a video of him playing uh, Tower or something in Times Square. Literally, as soon as they click off and start the song, he jumps in the crowd and just starts punching people in the head. That's the, you, unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> like they're fans of your music. Yeah, why are you hating them? That's, that's terrible. That's what our fans want to do to us. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want to shit on us and then bludgeon us to death. Yeah, just jump into the studio and start punching us. I By mean, the that's way, what, that's what G.G. would do. Well, yeah, but yeah. Gigi yeah, also wasn't the best music. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, he was probably making up for a little bit yeah. of ability. No, he has he has a couple decent songs, but you, you know what's great if you ever if you ever have time to watch is go watch uh, Gigi on. I think it's I think it's Jerry Springer. Oh yeah, I've uh, watched that. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> what, a nut. what did he die of? I think he Overdose just being a fucking yeah, maniac. Yeah, I think. I think he just partied. He, I th there's a radio show. There's, I think someone put it out as a cassette. But there's a radio show where he's like, he's like, come down, somebody with AIDS, come down and give me the AIDS. You can <laughs> fuck me in the ass and give me the AIDS. So and he like, didn't people, even want it through a needle. He's no, like, fuck me. He wanted to get the fun one. Yeah, and people were calling in. <laughs> <laughs> there's a great special on uh, Showtime about Gigi Allen. No way. Yeah. Is it still up on oh, demand and stuff? Yeah, and they talked to Merle Allen and they talked to his Gigi's mom and he's so upset that uh that Gigi's kind of looked at as this nut job. But there she's like he was such a great kid and Okay. Well, we don't we didn't know him as a kid. Yeah. Sorry. Merle, Sorry, mom. I used to correspond with Merle when I booked a little club, a little hardcore punk rock club. He would hit me up and send me like the package with like the the eight by ten and the bio and the cassette for murder junkies this is after gg had passed or whatever but uh but i used to correspond with him and i i remember people being like do not book that show don't <laughs> but i'm like well it's not they're not doing what gg did but they're like still you don't want that at this venue and then the club owner was like no 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 we can't have murder junkies like you gotta you know i think same Oh, what band are you in? I say hate breed and I get a look, but what if you're in the murder yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so By the way, are they still playing? They I think they are, yeah. I think Merle's still still kicking. Okay. And those Travis Scott Jordans, they're re releasing them next month. Oh, that's good news. So hopefully, uh, you know. Did you watch uh you did watch the dirt over the weekend? Uh, I did. I liked it. Did you I, see I, it, Jim? I, I uh no. The Molly it, Crew movie? Yeah. I didn't even know it was on. Yeah, it's on Netflix. 
Yeah, it's I, out. It came out Friday, it I think. Yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed I, it. They everybody's like, oh, it's you know, they, every you, you can't please everyone. They they're in a really hard position. It took them seventeen years, I think, to make the movie, and they got to cram. Why? Back. Because I think they didn't want to do some watered down, um, edited. Movie. I mean, I still felt like it was probably a little bit edited, but they addressed some hard stuff, right? They addressed Tommy Lee punching the girl. Yep. They addressed. Um, I mean, the, the opening scene is a girl squirting. So, did they? Did they? <laughs> did they have any stuff about like rock and roll? That yes. was in it towards the middle. <laughs> they did. There was two scenes. Um, I tell you this, and I think Jeff Tremaine might have directed it. The guy from Jackass. Yeah, I think he, he, did, he, ended he up did a great director. job. He did a great. It's job. It's on Netflix. I went in. I mean, I'm so soured on banned biopics lately yeah. that I went in with my expectations in the toilet. Like, I turned it on to hate watch it and just be like, this is going to be dog shit awful. And I found myself enjoying it. And yeah. I was like, this is actually really good. And I came out of it and I was like, it's a super fun movie. I really liked it. It's like a super high quality made for TV movie. Right. Like, if, if, if they were doing a Motley Crue movie for VH1. Except it was totally uncensored, and they were going to do a really good job. That's what this movie would be, I think. It's yeah. not like a theater movie, but it's those are the expectations you should go in with it. And the more I thought about it, the more I said, you can't convince me that Bohemian Rhapsody is a better movie than The Dirt. I think The Dirt was probably better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, on a fraction I want to hear about how they do it for a fan. They did it for the fans, though. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> how it was all for the fans. You mean the way Queen Shut did up. it? <laughs> Ugh, the fucking worst. If you want to see a good one that's not a feel good like uh, band like, movie, see Lords of Chaos. That's where I keep I, I should I get should I buy it on iTunes? Yeah, and you guys should have Rory Culkin in here if you haven't yet. We did before not to promote this movie, but before we've had him in. Okay, for yeah. What? He came in for another movie. He I th what like um Scream 4 or something or what? No, I whatever he, he did in between the two. Okay. Um he cuz I just had him on my podcast and i didn't i didn't expect it to be a huge episode and it the it got crazy amounts of downloads and i i think people really reacted to this movie because he he worked really hard at it they did a great job and it's super dark and fucked up the the staunch black metal fans are having a problem with it because they make varg look really bad but varg i mean did kill euronymous so i was like how do you make him look good yeah they make him it's it, yeah it, all right then i'm gonna i'll probably see it this weekend then i've been like i've been watching the trailer looks amazing and everybody's saying good things but if you like it i'll uh I I'll thought it was great. It's it. super dark and fucked up. It starts out kind of like the dirt where it's like this campy metalhead thing and they're chugging beers and everything and then they get into the real story. I like that. And it's it's nuts. And the scenes, I don't want to spoil anything. Overrated. But. And let's be honest, Elton John sucks. No, he doesn't. But <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. But I, he, you doesn't, know. he doesn't like Dr. Octopus <laughs> and it's creepy and those fucking that hairdo. <laughs> Sam keeps saying I suck. Hold All on, right, though. Elton. You got to give him one thing. He what? has a smash hit. That is so uplifting. It's um, uh, I'm, still I'm still standing. standing. Yes, come on, that's a hit. Look, I, the I, candle Rocket the wind Man was makes, a hit. <laughs> candle in the wind was a candle hit. Candle in the wind makes me want to blow my brains out when it comes. I on, like but. I'm still standing, but that's only because my kid likes it. Anything he likes, I'm like, okay, that's good. But <laughs> what I, if he's not in the car? I'm not listening to. I'm still. Go Don't go away. breaking my heart. You don't like Philadelphia Fuck Freedom? If I you little commie mo. You don't no. like fucking Philadelphia Freedom? No. 76? Elton, Day. Elton John sucks. No, you're wrong. I don't like Crocodile Rock. What is that? Don't play that. <laughs> Crocodile Rock? rock? Yeah. That's, that's a, a that's bad a, song. You probably just don't know that it's called that. It's Crocodile super... Rock. It's a dumb song. I remember me. Oh, God. Do we have volume here? Wait, I'm not wearing uh, headphones. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a huge... Who's the modern version of Ellen John? Is there, like, someone who rips on the piano and sings? Is anybody out like that? I don't know. Probably Lady Gaga. Yeah. The song is okay, but I don't like the, the, the idea of Crocodile Rock. If you're, asking, else. if you're asking who the uh, the modern version of Elton John was in the sense that he's very successful but sucks, I would say Adam Levine from Maroon 5. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't well, you say know, that. There, there's like a modern version. You would not, Troy? No, I would not. There, there's like a modern version of all the 70s and 80s artists, like someone was playing me this band, Greta Van Fleet, who are huge. Yeah. And, and when we were talking about the, the hard rock thing, I thought, yeah, why isn't... I mean, they're huge. They're just as popular, if not more popular, than some of these hip-hop and country artists like maybe hard rock is playing them but why isn't something like that uh like did you guys have them on your show why isn't that they haven't been around don't they here's i saw them on snl yeah. and they're great okay but aren't they like super derivative 
Like, don't they just kind of sound like? I don't know. Well, that's, I like, think... that's like all those old bands. Like, remember Wolf Mother? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, it's. Yeah. Like, they have two albums and break up. Yeah, pretty much. I think, and I think they redid the whole band after the first album. But yeah, it's this. Yeah, it's basically like it feels derivative. Yeah, I mean, every with rock music. I mean, what's really left to do? That's the thing about rock is that like you need something that feels like you haven't heard it before for it to really, I think, penetrate but the there's mainstream. There's so many great bands like this and and Hailstorm and Shine Down who are playing arenas and I mean, there's so many rock bands that I I feel like just because they're not in the mainstream sort of yeah, I guess internet and newspapers and things like that that they get overlooked but mm -hmm. they're just as popular i mean these festivals with these rock bands and they're they're huge like we played one that that rock on the range there was like it's oh, in a stadium right? yeah, yeah you did the comedy stage right? years ago yeah a few years but you have to put all the bands together now no i mean there's there's bands that go out with a two or three band package like i was saying rob, rob zombie, zombie or, yeah. or or corn or even you know, corn's going out with Allison Chains, and that's going to pack or sell out sheds. Yeah, but it's just what's a shed? A shed is like a, a pavilion that you could, if you sell enough tickets, you could open up a lawn. Oh, okay. So it's like you have seats and a big stage, and it's in. A, it looks kind of like a shed, and then there you have that lawn. Like we're right. we've done them. GPNC in Jersey, right? Exactly. We played there probably ten times. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, is it are our rock fans just older? Like, is it that they're not picking up young fans, that it's all, all older people? I mean, you'd know. You know the demographics of your audience. No, I, I just think that they're not as present on social media mm -hmm. because they're working people, they have jobs. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not, like, moving the needle on social media all day, every day, like some of these social media influencers and, and rappers and country artists, I think that maybe some of the, the major magazines and the major internet sites... Aren't going to pick you up because you're not going to get the clicks. Or put you back or put you down on the page. Well, that Speaking probably is an age thing, though, too, because that would mean that, I mean, you're at least in your mid-20s if you're, like, busy and working and stuff. I think, like, the teenagers are the ones that are all over social media and 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 driving, you know, hip-hop and pop music and stuff like that. I right? hate influencers. I you do? I hate <laughs> I'm an influencer. It's just some fucking asshole with a Twitter account. By the way, that girl's blaming her parents. Olivia Jade? I guess they did force her into college. She said she didn't want to go, so maybe she has a legitimate gripe. You're kind of supposed to protect your fucking teenage kid from that type of stupidity. We're not supposed even... to get him fake. Uh, yeah. Him it. But wouldn't she have known? So Olivia Jade is, of course, Aunt Becky's daughter. And uh, she is the one who uh, they paid five hundred thousand dollars for her and her sister to get into college because uh, she's dumb, right? By pretending she's on the rowing team. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so, she couldn't possibly have had the grades to get into a good school, right? It would. It would appear not. <laughs> Because they paid a lot of money to get her in. And there is video. I mean, we played it on the show last week or a couple of weeks ago of her saying she doesn't really want to go to class. She's not interested. And, you know, she is crazy successful on YouTube. Like, but she is she is ridiculously she financially. She still has her page up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The page isn't down. I don't but know if she's still doing new stuff at the moment. but Can I ask you guys a question? Yes. Like, the most rich, powerful person that you know, Jim. do they seem like they would do something like this for social currency, right? Like to, to, to put their, to lie and, and pay all this money to put their kid in some prestigious school. Like that still has social value current, like, so I don't know. It's weird. I, you, cause it, it seems like all these kids don't need college. They don't. Yeah. You, they make like, them more on you, YouTube. Unless it's, unless you're trying to impress your rich friends. By saying my kid is doing so that well. That could at be this about college. the parents wanting to say, "Hey, my son so goes yeah. to USC." Oh, yeah, exactly. Ooh, really, think... your cum is succeeding. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking annoying. That's the only thing I can think of because you're totally right, Jamie. That she doesn't need college. She's already making more money than the professors are by doing makeup tutorials on YouTube. Right. So this is just for bragging rights. It seems that way. So they can be like, look, we didn't f completely fuck up and have this sort of airhead. But um, realistically, if you're sitting shallow there, if you're, child. Sit if you're sitting there going, my kid is, you know, making all this money. She started her own business to, just because some people think that, you know, YouTubers are stupid or what. If she's a successful business person and she's 19 years old, I don't know why we're acting like that's not something to brag about, right? Right. That to me would have more currency, I guess, social currency in this day and age. If they if they I were at so. some party, you know, saying like, "Oh, what is your daughter up to?" Oh, well, she's got millions of followers on social media. Does that mean something to people? It doesn't mean anything to me. She but. puts on makeup and films it. 
Yeah, but she sells a whole bunch. Sure, of them. she does. <laughs> flat. Yeah. What's the tea? The, I love, that's my favorite one. Like the flat tummy tea. Like that can't work. That has to be bullshit. What's a right? flat tummy I don't know tea? What, that's like what the influencers always sell. I unfollowed a bunch. You got to be careful I on Instagram. Don't Why? You, you can't do the horny scroll because you end up fi- you end up scrolling through uh, like the discover page. Oh my oh, yeah. god! Is she lovely? <laughs> Lydia Jane is very attractive. Oh, How old is she? 19. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> holy shit. But that, that stuff has to be bullshit. Like, I unfollowed a bunch of them that were selling that stuff. It's like, Jim, why don't you like influencers? The idea of an influencer. I'm a me. I have to shit, by the way, badly. <laughs> okay. Again. I'll keep yeah. that in mind. Go to the different I, stall. This I'd rather time. hear about the influencers. We'll, we'll talk about when we come back from break. We have to break anyway. We don't have to break right now. Yeah, we, we're good. It's 920. No, you're fine. Fine. Are you <laughs> pitching them like I was in Indonesia? Uh-huh. But don't you want to, if there's a pretty girl out there, I want to know if I'm a girl, how can I get pretty like Olivia Jade? Oh, she'll tell me. Sure. I'll buy the products. The products will pay me. I don't understand. Yeah. It's like billboards, except on your phone. But I, okay, so, so other girls in her age range trust her choices in products and that's how she monetizes her yes, yeah okay. like, I which makes like her which makes sense i mean i would trust your recommendations jamie on uh musical stuff you would but yeah you would do music if you I were, don't know if you're going to kanye and and, and travis <laughs> <laughs> you're right you might you I'm might like, we might we might have to take there may be a fork in the road i'm like check out cannibal corpse <laughs> <laughs> all right Jim. april we'll, four we'll five six shit. san francisco May, I have Rochester, and I may be moving the stress factory due to a possible uh, shoot conflict. The building itself? Yes. Wow. We're moving it to where I'm going to be shooting. Wow. I, I may have to move that date. No, in Jersey. I may okay. have to move that to, uh, I'm thinking September, October, um, because if I have to cancel, I don't want to cancel last minute. Uh, you can see Hatebreed's 25th anniversary tour. That's Jamie Josta uh, and his band Hatebreed. They will be doing full sets of Elton John covers. <laughs> and that's happening uh, all throughout April. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary. April 4th, they'll be in Philly. April 5th, they'll be in uh, Worcester. April 6th in New York. April 8th in Toronto. All over the place. Go to Hatebreed.com and get your tickets, your VIP packages. Look, bring enough money. That you could buy merch at a Kanye show, <laughs> and you'll be able to buy out the entire merch. Get stand. a shirt from every band. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Play, PlayStation Theater, I want to plug. Yeah, uh, f- April nineteenth, and also New Haven. Shout out to all my Connecticut people. New Haven College Street Music Hall, four twenty, brah. Nice. So we'll have to make like a weed inspired shirt for that one. You know, Jim and I like to. We sometimes <laughs> call ourselves the Jim and Sam uh, Smoke Club. Yes, isn't that right? Yep. Oh, right and back. I got I got I, I got to plug the uh, Jim. Where are you going? Dude? Jamie was just going to plug something. If you just want to, <laughs> I don't want you to be gone. He's going to he's going to have to plug something if he doesn't get out of here. Jim really rushed out of here. I got with pl- his hand on his butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I got to plug the network too. I and and my podcast, the Josta WWE Show. Network. Oh, sh- well, hey, yeah! Shout out to WWE <laughs> Network. I was watching it last night. I love Yeah, I loved this. Uh, I love this best like fan interaction beatdown clip they made. Like where they, <laughs> it was great. Like they awesome. showed like Ronda Rousey and Travis Brown like beating up people in the front row and, stuff. Uh-huh. and other other you know classic clips. But uh, Gas Digital Network, check it out. We have D Snyder on the network. Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, my my show. I have a bunch of recent episodes. Great episodes. Jim Brewer, Rory Louis, Culkin, Louis J. Gomez has fifteen podcasts, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, shout out to Louis. I just did the the intro music for his special. It's coming out uh, April first. I saw the preview for it, and I was there when he shot it. Uh, it's a nice. great special. It's a really great special. I'm excited yeah. for you guys to see it. I'm sure we'll have him in to talk about that. All right, Jamie. We'll be. We're gonna take a break. Great. We'll be back. Jim will be done shitting. It's gonna be a marvelous <laughs> time. Stay tuned. <laughs> You can live you can live a great life off of one. <laughs> look, there's a lot of hits. It's a nice song, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not I'm not feeling good song. Look at look at his whole yeah. body language, his whole face has changed. Look I have it. a splitting headache. Like, I feel like I've been shot in the temple and I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Something can suck and be a hit at the same time. And you're down a couple chords. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Here it goes. And bird about and but he doesn't even sound like this anymore. What a lovely voice, older. You can't say that. Oh, yeah, but now he goes 70. Like, Travis is bopping in there. How do you not bop? Absolutely. 
She's still missing. Okay. <laughs> but Travis, <laughs> Madeline McCann. How do you think? I watched that. How do you think? Elton, terrible. How do you think Elton John would sound if he were singing this today? Terrible. Like, what would it sound like? I don't know. When you walk through the garden. Something like that. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. Come on, do a little Elton John. No, I'm not your dog. I don't just do what I, what you want me to. But we got that other song today, right? Right, Rob? We need to get more music out yeah. of it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we are we are gonna we are gonna eventually have a whole album. Oh yeah, you yeah. two tracks. Travis is he likes to sing songs. I don't like to do anything. But he sounds like he's 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 developed into a parody of himself at this point, Elton John. He's a parody of himself. Hey, at least he's, he's not sucks, using right? at least he's not using uh, fake tracks. And by at least he's out there belting. The he should be using fake. Find Elton John 2019 live or 2018 live. But he still sounds good. And by the way, his wig terrible when he was doing the Eminem thing. He's horrible. horrible. He did? Horrible. What year was that? No. He that was, was right when, when Stan <laughs> came out. <laughs> Stan, that was like 10 years ago, no? 15 years ago? Yeah, more than that. Travis, you play piano too? Nope. No, he sucks on the organ. <laughs> <laughs> hi oh. Hey, Uncle Jim. <laughs> oh, that's, so quick. that's an old one. <laughs> and by the way, his wig is way worse than anybody in Kiss, Steven Seagal. Yeah, but he's always been known for crazy wigs. Like, that's never it's been a secret. It's not supposed to be a crazy wig. No, no, it is. He's that always, one? Yeah, yeah. He's always said he's wearing wigs. Elton John has never hid the fact that he wore weird wigs. Well, he's hid the fact that he, he gave up on singing years ago. No, find a newer one, Troll. Something from uh, 2018. Yeah, sorry, you listen yeah. to, let, let's listen to this for a second. I like it. This. Okay, let, terrible. let's hear. Hang on. Because you remember how great Dido sounded? Yes. Like this, this, her being on the hook to Eminem's Stan made her a success. Sure. She had a successful album, a couple singles after it. Oh Who? This was Dido. Oh, yeah, Dido. Yeah, this was 18 years ago. So uh, Eminem is a, is a homophobe. They're saying in the news. Sure. And so in order to silence all the critics and, and hatters, uh, Eminem brings Elton John out to perform with him at the Grammys. And, you know, all the critics. See, back then it was like, well, Elton John is the gayest. So yep. if Eminem and Elton John are friends, everything's cool. Oh, so that's like <laughs> Ellen bringing out Kevin Hart on the show. It's like it's the, the yeah, they tried that. that. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. tried that, except that blew up in both their right. faces because it's not 1999 anymore, whatever year this was. So is Elton a sellout to the gay community for doing this? No, like, in, in in, in, no. in two thousand, was this two thousand, Travis? Two thousand one. In two thousand one, wow. this was okay. If you brought out okay. the gayest guy, then that proves you're not a homophobe. Because yeah, how could it's you rumored be? that Elton is a homosexual. <laughs> Rumored. You said rumored, right? Rumored, yes, okay, yes, I don't yes. want to get sued. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, yeah I don't want. Yeah. I don't want lawsuits being yeah. flung our way, um, <laughs> or anything else. Okay, well, let's hear it. That that bullshit staccato. <laughs> <laughs> He's horrible. I'm enjoying this. So bad. Oh, I can't see it. He's never heard the song before. He's never uh, heard the song great. before. So they snubbed I disagree. I'm Dido enjoying. for this? Yeah. Well, this dude was a bigger story to have Elton John. Because oh, Dido, yeah, but it Dido. would have been nice for Dido. Yeah, but this, but it wouldn't have been, he was, Eminem is bigger than Dido. He wasn't bigger than Elton John, so this made it. Instead, they've got this polka dotted fool butchering Dido's song. <laughs> I happen to like that version very he much. Has, <laughs> Hers he, is better, but I like Elton's live little interpretation. He's never heard the song before. He just got Good. the lyrics. Yeah, Good he for him. He's like, <laughs> There's, like, I don't know what he's singing about. There's no sort of emotion. He started mumble rap right that, there. That say about all. Yeah, I feel like he's tone deaf. Let's hear Rocket Man 2019. Let's hear how he's doing. <laughs> okay, this is the live version. Oh, they look like my glasses. I mean, it's not it, bad for fucking 70. It's tough to hear. It's echoey. I give, I give but it, sound, of, it sounds horrible. I give a lot of fucking leeway to older singers because your voice goes. There's not much you can do. Well, you could not sing. Nah, but you, you still want to go see them though. Like well, I still would want to go hey, see them. Can not I just me. give D. Snyder another shout real quick? If you want to, if you because I produce this album, so if you want to give a little taste, D. Sounds so good. He can still if, sing. If you want to give a little taste of like for the love of metal, or, or, or become the storm. No, it's recorded. But yeah, live. We is are great not too. gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not. Gonna take it. <laughs> okay, Elton, relax. <laughs> but, the, you know, for D to go this hard, this late in the game, you know, especially after being a rock god in the 80s, and, and then to, to agree to do a metal album. And it, look at this. <laughs> so great. Let's hear it. Because D's you sitting there going to like. The, to the vocals, if you want. Yeah, we're sitting there giving like. Oh, 
That's amazing. He still sounds like D. He rips. And we would be in the studio with like nudging each other. We didn't want him to see us, but we'd be freaking out, like fanboying out because he would do a t- like one pass, and that was album worthy. Like no auto tune, no studio he tricks. He sounds really good. Sound yeah. Great. Listen to this. The band sounds great too. Yeah, Charlie and Nikki, they did. They're great. This lineup he has is amazing. See, like, if you're going to perform later in life, you should be doing this. Otherwise, like, football players don't get to just keep playing football forever, even though they're horrible because they're old. Well, also, Bruce Dickinson and Rob Halford have never sounded better. Like, Rob, people go to the show, and they're waiting for him to hit, like, the big note and screaming uh, for changes or, or any of those hits. And Rob is, he doesn't even warm up. He's pitch perfect. Like, mm-hmm. we just, we played with him last summer in Germany. And I had just, my hair stood up. I went into the crowd and watched him, and he just nails painkiller, all the smashes. He just nails it. So some people get, especially I think in rock and metal, they just get better with age. Right. And And football players are a bad example because the the goal is to win or lose, and you have other people at stake. There's so much more defined, a definition of success or failure when you're playing football. If you're singing and you're still performing, and people are like, yeah, the voice cracks, but I don't give a fuck. I still like, like Ozzy would sometimes sing because he has dyslexia, would literally sing the second verse first. I never gave a fuck. Yeah, but it still (laughs) sounded good. But sometimes it didn't. There's times, (laughs) there's been times like I would go buy old live Ozzy shit. Literally, he would open on the Diver Madman tour over the mountain, by verse one he was cracking. I didn't give a fuck. I love the live version. Was that during? A, was that during drug years? Yeah, perhaps he was. <laughs> might have been irresponsible <laughs> behavior. There Not are so times, much. Yeah, but, you, but the point is, like, as someone who loved him live, I didn't give a fuck. I just enjoyed it, and I actually liked it more because it was a little different than the studio record. So you can watch Elton John crack and not give a fuck. But like I've heard, I'm not worried about him cracking. He doesn't even—he doesn't sound anything like he Rocket used to. Rocket Man, yeah, it's I like terrible. That. <laughs> it's a new version of Rocket Man. <laughs> like he's awful. No, I love him. Like Ozzy, I would still, I don't have any problem with Ozzy. I would still go to an Ozzy show now. I've been to Ozzy shows when he's an old man. He still sounds great. Well, who else doesn't sound like, you know, I get Elton John, you just don't like, you, if, you, if you liked him, you might feel differently. Like if you liked him a little bit to begin with, but you don't. Bah, 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 bah. It's horrible. I like him. I went to a, a ENT. Rob Zombie still sounds good. And I he got does. The, he's not uh, as old as Elton either. I got the laryngoscopy, how do you say it, where they put the camera in? Mm -hmm. And I do this like once a year, or sometimes I'll do it every six months if I have a really long tour. And one of the the doctors I went to, I think he he saw Rod Stewart. And he he didn't find the same thing in your (laughs) stomach, I hope. (laughs) <laughs> I set him up and Jim knocks him out, you know, you know, but the, but he's he was saying I don't have any nodules or polyps or whatever because p- when people hear my music, they go, how do you do that? How, how have you done that for 25 years? Someone like D, if he was to go, you know, to a doctor, he probably has stronger vocal cords than some of the opera singers and some of the, the Broadway musical singers that they see. And I don't know what it is if it's. You know, if it's genetics or what, but um, some of these doctors, they say like, you know, when you get much older, you lose some of your range. So with Elton, maybe he's um, maybe he's just singing those songs in his current range. Of course he is. Yeah, yeah, But if it's no good, it's no good. But, but it, you could sing it. But I could, actually like it. I, it's not as good as I mean, it used to be, on. but I don't mind that. But you know, bands I, tune down. They'll I, tune down. Like, they'll tune down a half step so that they can sit yeah. in that range. Um, if you, And if you have a limited range, I mean, there's a lot of famous... Yeah, but wait, I, I don't know anything about any of that stuff. I just am like, that sucks. But I still, you know, I still like it, not as much as the old me. stuff, but I don't mind it. Like, I can listen to that. I would see him live and still enjoy it, so it doesn't bother me. But like, look, I see John and Philly saying, I'm not going to go because I'm, I'm trying to get to something else, but it says, does dumbass Sam know that Elton John had surgery on his throat? Doesn't I don't care. Yeah, one way and that or the was other. not a surgical implement. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I may need to ask Jamie to do something for us. I think as a show, we may need to have our friend Jamie create something for us. Oh, yeah. I, I think, should we play the original? Well, let's go to Rich Uh-oh. in Chicago, because, you know, he's the one who triggered uh, this idea in my head. What's going on, Rich? Hey, guys, I was wondering if anybody played the clips of J.D. and the Straight Shot for Jamie Josta, or maybe he's already familiar with them. I don't know. Jamie, that's a great question, Are you a big fan? I'm not. Let me see this. What is this? Okay, this is uh, James Dolan, owner of the Knicks and the Rangers in Madison Square Garden, and he has a band called J.D. and the Straight Shot. No, it's very It's very catchy. Did they let Charles Oakley back in the garden yet? We don't know. We don't know for sure. Fuck James Dolan. We're more focused on the music. A lot of people feel that way. Yeah, that's fucked up. He says they let him back in 
They did. He's our intern, and he's a beat reporter for the Knicks. Yeah. Okay, because I was at the game after the day after, and the, we were all chanting whatever it was, "Bring back Oakley." Or, or well, James Dolan has this band, and I, I this is a good song. However, his hands are in his pockets. Don't let that distract okay. you during the video. <laughs> Don't Travis, let his hand placement distract you. Do you have our you. covers ready? Yeah. Okay. Here and his go. teeth. Just keep focused on his teeth. He's a nice, <laughs> smile. He's a nice <laughs> smile. Why is he doing this? He's well, a let's nice see. smile. Let's see. Maybe he's, this is his passion. The girl's very good too. And the musicians are good. Is this a stand up bass? See, the hands in the box are not good. Nah, nah, his hands aren't good. No. Oh, this is supposed to be like. It's blues. That hit song that came out. I wouldn't call this blues. It's bluesy. He said it's blues. It doesn't sound like blues, though. Cosplay blues. How many views does this have? 180,000. Most from us. 175,000, yeah. And you better confess. Get it off your chest. Get your soul so, so we've been obsessed. Yeah. With the fact that, in my opinion, did I think... This song, did Troy, did this song uh, kind of uh, get you? It's been stuck in my goddamn head all Me week. Me too. All, I, all I think week. Jim and I are differing on this. I've been obsessed with it because uh, I actually don't think James Dolan is the greatest singer in the world. I happen to just... I don't like his hand placement in his pockets. And also, he's one of the worst writers of song lyrics of all time. <laughs> this one is good. But No, no, no. This one included. No, no. We've <laughs> actually... We've inspired people, you know, through our show and this song... Um, we we've, we've inspired. There's a there's a band called the Face Plants. That's right. That does our theme song. That was inspired. Travis, do you have the Face Plants version version they of Better a Find nice a Church? Of this. Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I do too, Jamie. <laughs> That's the way it should sound. <laughs> yeah. It's actually really good. It's really good. But why? Why is JD and the Straight Shot a thing? Like, is this something he was he a musician before he became? Well, he's been, in? been a band, band since 2005. <laughs> Typically, every three years, they release a, a record, and it's his passion project. Okay. Passion. He's a bit sensitive. Uh, he's a, he's an ass for throwing people out of the garden because they don't like him. It's like you got to stop that shit. But he's a musician first. He's a musician in his heart. Yeah, and his band's big enough to play the garden. Absolutely, they open for the Eagles. No way. It has nothing to do with him owning the building. No way. Yeah. yeah. He opened for the Eagles in Come the on. building that he owns. Well, that's so what? That was a coincidence. They're probably like, hey, you're it's already here. It's not a here. coincidence, Jamie. <laughs> I don't think it Come is. Come on. Listen to this. Listen to the face plants. Now, does Billy, will Billy let him open up when he does this, like, monthly show? <laughs> I wonder if Billy Joel would let JD open up Depends for him. Depends on what the relationship is. I wonder if he got that call. Like, hey, man, if you don't mind. He's like, actually, I do mind. He's like, well, actually, <laughs> uh, you're going to have to not mind. So that's the face plans. Then this huge EDM band called Black Caviar that Troy happens to be a member of also <laughs> was inspired by uh, JD and the Straight Shot, and they did their own version of Better Find a Church. Better find a church. Oh yeah, you better drop the bass, Troy. Are you, are you gonna hit me with some 808s and shit? Uh, yeah, I guess you wait. <laughs> They're better. <laughs> this is music. Uh, Black Caviar specializes in music to twerk by. I believe. Are, are we gonna have to take Molly? I want to do some right now. <laughs> and say Molly, maybe twerk a little bit. Okay. I want to do Molly. Oh, you're gonna drop it, aren't you, Troy? Oh, is yeah, this like yeah. dubstep? I want to do some drugs. What is this called? What genre is this? Trap. Okay. So, but it's electronic. It all falls under. Yeah, it's electronic trap. Yeah. Okay. So, Jamie, this is better than them both. Here's my. Thank you, Jamie. Like this sounds like it, it would be on like trailers for a movie or something. But here's what the show needs. Our show needs. 
is Jamie Jasta's interpretation oh, God. of Better Find a Church. All right, we uh, need uh, it. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I might, I might have some studio time next week. I was going to do would, a couple. That would, would be like great. Make things. sure you get the lyrics. Yeah, we'll yeah. send you the song and everything and the lyrics. Now, we got to pay him the pub, right? We got to pay JD. Like, we, is, he, is he on to this now? Well, see, JD. They retweeted the face plants. They he did? Doesn't, he of doesn't, course. He doesn't like black caviar. I didn't get a retweet. You no. think he's <laughs> running the Twitter? No. Great. He's going to hear this and be like, fuck him. <laughs> he, he wants Oakley back. I'm going to get banned, too. <laughs> but we do need a, we do need a Jamie Josta version yes. of uh, Better Find a Church. Can I really, like, thug it out, though? Like, do whatever you want to do. Your death interpretation. Yeah, whatever please. you want. Death metal it down. Give it the sickest breakdown. <laughs> However you feel it should be heard. <laughs> it, our, for, for Jim and myself, it's all about... However, the music speaks to you. Is that yeah, right? exactly. Absolutely. Uh, my only complaint is the hands in the pockets. <laughs> what James like Dolan, his hands are way too comfortable. His, he still looks like a kid taking a school picture. <laughs> like he looks like that level of discomfort during a music video. Plus, how come his pants are so tight that his uh, chubby fingers can hardly get in the pockets? Yeah, he does kind of have the whole thing, like where they go down on the knuckles and then they they kind of bend outward as they hang out. It's just not sure what to do. Is this song about like when you've had that when Jim's had that you know long weekend in Atlantic City? Is this like the Monday song? No, I think that you know here's the, what's interesting about JD and the Straight Shot is that their lyrics are a very literal interpretation of what they intended. Absolutely. There so why is do we gotta no, find a church? There is no deeper meaning or metaphor. Sure He's saying is. like, no, we have to go locate a church. They're in a church, and we have to do it quickly. Yeah. 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 There's no second draft. No, 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 no. There shouldn't no. be. No, 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 no. So can you do that for us, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. I awesome. can't wait. I can't wait to Blast hear it. Blast beats. Yeah. And well, you guys are going to get... The grind part. Yeah. That's right. A ting. We need a ting before it kicks yes. in. You guys are going to get to hear Jamie on Hatebreed's 25th anniversary tour. It's all starting April 4th at the Franklin Music Hall in Philly. And then it goes all throughout April in Massachusetts and New York, Detroit, Cincinnati, Tampa. And, of course, April 19th at the PlayStation Theater here in New York City. That's going to be a big show. We always love having you on, Jamie. You got to come on the Chip Podcast. You still haven't come on. I know. I would love to. Thank, yeah, and thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and it's great to see you guys. And Well, thanks in advance for uh, giving us another version of Better right. Find a Church. Better Find a Church. We'll just, we'll just fucking, we'll go I already off love it. it. I already <laughs> love it. Yeah. Jim? Uh, just April 4, 5, 6 in San Francisco. That's going to be a good show. Let's hope so. I think so. Yeah. I have a lot of faith in it. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you Shouldn't. all tomorrow. What? Thanks, guys. <laughs>